Well, I mean, I could let it run through the, the whole countdown thing, but uh, I don't know. I also think it irritates the hell out of some people, so it's kind of fun to just make it go away. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's been a minute, and uh, oh, it's been really fun getting a chance to play some other games with other people. I've, I've been really enjoying the collab stuff lately, um, especially because the last few times I've played the cyberpunk story, I've cried on stream. Like, every time. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully we're not looking at the same thing again for three three nights in a row for this, this uh, 2064 cyberpunk story. But don't be surprised if things are a little heavy, because, like, I mean, last we left off, our, our little friend, Turing, um, found out that their creator had died and took a walk home in the rain. And us and the one other human that had worked on them, uh, both were at a complete loss on, like, what to do and, and how to help, and just, it was, it was kind of a mess. Uh, poor Turing was not, not doing great, and that's kind of, like, where we left off, because I, I'd already had a bit of a night with, um, doing that weird dating sim part of the story, and... I'm having to like hear the backstory of some of the splicers and like why they became splicers in the first place in a lot of cases it's medical necessity and damn it is written well it is written so well and it is so so hard to uh not draw parallels to experiences that either I myself have had or people that I know personally uh have had to struggle with in in their their journeys medically and whatever else so let me turn this down this is a lot louder than i intended all right but uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna be doing some more story time here and i expect it's gonna be probably one of those longer streams um kind of prepare to settle in grab yourself a snack turn out the lights grab your headphones turn them up because it's gonna be a lot it always is, and it's sick. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off the no- the- In fact, this isn't nose it's head empty. This is head very full music because, uh, game- game very head full. Game very, very head full. <laughs> Let's see. Make certain my model's in the right spot. such good music in this i really enjoy it 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 doesn't get in the way and it doesn't detract in any way it only seems to really enhance each scene and feels just as much a character to each scene as the characters themselves oh. Oh, okay. Wait. I saved it, though. Hold on. Oh, Tomcat is pinging us. Forwarding video and audio. Hold up. Chapter 3. Yeah, Chapter 3. Load. Oh, you're back. Okay. Yeah, so we got home and Turing was already here. Um, after we had told Tomcat that we were going to try and hunt them down and, well, not hunt them down, but go chase them. See if we could help. 
Turing, how are you doing? You know, Hayden was a brilliant programmer, far ahead of his time. He was. I am a machine, and intrinsically, I do not have all the glands and visceral chemical reactions that make humans so emotional and brilliant. Okay. But his code is a flawless replication of that inside my own personality algorithms. So you're feeling all of this the same as anyone else would. I don't think I've ever felt this... this... anger. Yeah. It fouls my processors and fills my RAM with frustrating, half-finished plans of revenge. That's way too relatable, buddy. My motherboard burns in my casing from how little I can rest. Hey there, now, Maggie. How you doing? <sighs> yeah. I'm in pain, and I can't make it go away! And there's nothing that really will either, bud. <sighs> I just accidentally skipped. Thank you, Maggie. Uh... Will do. I have water right here. I keep trying to... So thirsty, so I need to drink too. Okay. Okay, we'll drink together. Ah. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Um, I'm going to try and actually back out of this interaction and load it again. Because there's no choices that I made here, uh, but I don't want to miss any commentary from Turing. This is an important conversation. Oh, you're back. How are you doing, hon? You know, we'll we'll, we'll run through machine, this part. But his code, I don't think I. It fouls my processors. My motherboard burns in my casing from how little I can rest. I'm in pain, and I can't make it go away! <sighs> I do not like the thoughts I'm having about the people who did this to him. I bet not. Are you able to disable... Well, uh, yeah, are you able to disable them in any way? I... I could. I can disable those modules. But it wouldn't be worth it. But if I turn off every emotion I don't want to feel, what does that make me? Would I still be me? Uh, organic individuals do this a lot. They choose to, and... It doesn't make them any more or less a person or a human, but it does make the, make things more difficult to work with or against later in many cases. So it is a healthy response to look at this this way. Uh, but in some cases, it is also important to know when to retract. If that If that sense of rage won't go away, if those... If those thoughts won't leave, sometimes it's better to retract. If I were human, turning off my emotions would be seen as extremely unhealthy. <sighs> it is a normal response in mourning to do so because of the extremity of the situation. There is a wealth of information on the MeshNet about human psychology. I just don't know how much of it applies to myself. If your programming's a near flawless copy, then wouldn't it be the same? Also, things are going really good, Maggie. Um, I I spent a lot of time today actually working on new alerts for the channel, and I'm pretty happy with a lot how a lot of them came out. Um, I've got some more music like set aside so I can actually do even more, but I need to do more VR recording, and that's just gonna kind of require that I hang out with some folks that are okay with me putting myself on camera and, and muting whatever's being said there. <laughs> Either way, Hayden deserves my grief. 
Oh, Jerry. Would Hayden have wanted that? It is my way of honoring him. It may be the only way I can. I offer it freely. Okay. Did you see the jade plant? Not yet. You're in front of it. It's doing well, despite the hardships it has gone through. Oh. There is a lesson there. I don't know that I can listen to it right now, but I'll try. Oh, honey. Will... Will you keep helping me? I need you. Yes, Turing. I didn't say I was gonna stop. Like, just because we found Hayden didn't mean I was gonna stop hanging out with you, buddy. To find the b bastards who killed my progenitor! That's gonna be harder to help you with, but I will do what I can. I need to finish this. I understand. Also, I get that, Maggie. I just, um... It's not me having to mute them that's the issue. It's them being okay with being, like, around a camera and acting normal during so, because not all folks are, are used to that. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do afterwards, but I need to see this through. Turing, I don't... I'm not sure how much... I should be told about your plans, but I'll do what I can. We'll bring them to justice. Justice. Yes. Good. <clears throat> I knew you'd keep me from losing myself in this. Yeah. Let's make sure they have the appropriate time to atone for their crimes in prison. Okay. Even if it takes the rest of their lives. Yeah. I think for now we should keep knowledge of Hayden's death between you, Tomcat, and I. Okay. It may give us an edge if the people we seek don't know how much we've already discovered. You know what? That's really smart. We'll talk after you've had some time to rest. Thank you. You likely need sleep, and I need some time to... I need some time. You need to process. Hmm. Good night, Turing. Outer, outer sunset. Good morning. I trust you slept well. Good morning, Turing. I think so. How about you, hun? I had ample time to recharge my internal batteries. Excellent. Good. <sighs> now that we are both refreshed, I feel it wouldn't hurt to recap our progress and determine if any changes should be made based on our successes and failures. Let's talk about how things are going so far. Okay. Since your journalistic efforts are a big part of why I originally recruited you, we can start there. Okay. So far, I might have expected a more inquisitive nature with those we meet, especially on a strong lead. Okay. People will listen to you more than they will me, so it's important to dig deep when possible. True, but in many cases, I'm also attempting to shelter you from whatever robophobia is going to be out there, let alone the other things that we've had to deal with so far. I'm not exactly happy with the way that you've been talking to other robots either, by the way. Like, you kind of... kind of concern me, bud. You're diligent in your day-to-day -day work as well, which further grounds my hope in you. Yeah, speaking of, I haven't done any day-to-day -day work since meeting you, and I, we've been spending a lot of money. I think I need to probably check my email. Let's pick up the pace a little in this regard, then. Hmm? Uh... What? Your strong investigative prowess will prove invaluable. Don't forget that. Okay. Beyond journalistic persistence, 
let's take a look at how we've performed in other responsibilities. Specifically, our choices in overcoming obstacles. Okay. Our first major hurdle proved challenging, but we made use of our surroundings and found a creative avenue. Are you talking about the furry knight thing? Well, Spicer knight. Furthermore, I am pleased with your utilization of non-violent methods. Eliminating any excessive risk should allow us to move swiftly. Finally, I was quite impressed by your ability to adapt on the fly, as they say, and perform so well when thrust into a sudden situation. Okay. Lastly, I'd like to discuss how we're getting along with our companions and allies along the way. It's important. True. I was very impressed with your negotiation abilities with those kids. We got our data cache, and they went on their way, and hopefully learned a lesson, too. Yeah, I tried to talk to them like a disappointed mom, this is true. Jess is a bit of a harder read, but she did agree to help us out in a big way. You know, I wonder if there's any way to, like, right off the bat, actually make her not upset. And I would be willing to try and, like, run through some conversational bits to see how that changes the story, but, like... I've been trying to play this true to myself, my future self, the persona that is the Sandwife, separate from the person driving all this, and trying to, like, make all those match in, in some manner as best I can, in addition to the limitations that the game places on you, because, oh, there are some bad choices that it gives you that are just outright rude, cruel, uh, yeah, the, I don't know. I'm glad that thus far I've been able to have, like, not only friendly interactions with most folks, but, like, creative, uh, constructive. The only part where that was different was talking with the, uh, the old-fashioned fascists. I, I didn't want to get along with them, and I don't think I, I will ever in any playthrough really look into any alternative options in those conversational choices there. I didn't want to talk to them. I just wanted to move the story along. As long as her brash nature doesn't tempt you to lash out, I think things will go smoothly. Detective Rivers was good to involve as well, and I can tell you enjoy having a familiar face around. She could prove to be our greatest aid, as long as we make it worth her time. No funny business. Tomcat seems to genuinely care for our cause, and I have no trouble with letting their expertise guide us. I love that uh, both Tomcat and Turing like, recognize each other as non-binary just right off the bat. So good. Out of everyone else, they seem to be easiest to get along with, too. <laughs> I wonder why. And finally, you and I. Yeah, bud? I must say, we have worked together better than I ever expected. I hope you feel the same. Oh. I feel confident in our combined ability, <laughs> and I enjoy your company as well. Please, continue showing me around the city as we continue our search. Oh. You know, that's really sweet, because, like, I could easily see Turing being like, I'm confident in our capability to make it through this, but you terrify me. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've just about run out of leads. I'm certain that we'll be able to find other, other options. Perhaps Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. Also, Detective Rivers was looking into things for us. I'm sure they did. I hope so, but I feel a little bad for relying on them as much as we do. Always going so far for Hayden. They must have been close. It's good of you to recognize that. Oh, speaking of them, incoming call from Tomcat. <laughs> Forwarding video and audio. Hathy. Morning. 
Hey, hon. Taryn, how you been doing, hon? I'm fine, Tomcat. Thank you for your concern. Turing. Well, okay. Just say the word if I can help out in any way, you hear? <clears throat> of course. In fact, I was hoping you might have a lead for us to start working at. <laughs> Otherwise, we're down to canvassing Hayden's address book and seeing if any of his contacts have an idea about who might have had a desire to target him. But that's just fishing in the dark. Yeah. Well, I pulled a fair amount of data from the Parallax servers before they managed to kick me out, but it'll take me a while to go through it. Okay. A lot of it's unrelated. TPS reports, maintenance logs, juicy meat for other corporations, but about as useful as dirt to us. All right. Let me do a thing here real quick. Ah, uh, I think I see what's going on. Well, there we go. It'll take me a while to decrypt all of Hayden's files, but maybe we'll find something there. Okay. So, no, I don't have as much as a whiff of a trail on who's behind this. Uh, yeah. Though, I, I recently got a strange request from a friend of a friend. Hmm. Someone's been messing with the articles of a news organization named Augmented Eye. Okay. It seems like the network security head there is asking around for cybercrackers to help figure out how their reports are getting changed. Weird. The original files on their servers are untouched. In their system, everything looks peachy keen. Huh. But when you view the site from the outside of the network, things are changed up. A word here, phrase there, it's subtle, but often has a big impact on the article's tone. Oh. Someone with deep access to Parallax's mesh net is changing what's being shown. That's terrifying. I ain't sure if it's related, but maybe y'all can head down to the main KCOB offices and try talking to the gal that runs Augmented Eye. Her name is Zin. Okay. I ain't got the time or the desire to stick my nose that far out for a stranger, but it seems like your kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. Rely on the investigator for this one. Hmm. It does seem to be a bit of a stretch. But if we have to wait for you to work on the data we've collected anyway... Well, we'd be happy to look into it. Alright. I'll pass the word along that you'll be in sometime today to stick your noses in. <laughs> and I'll send y'all word as soon as I get anything worth hunting down. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Tomcat. We are grateful for your continued assistance. No problem, Turin. Are you sure you're gonna be okay? Maybe you should take a little more time. You've been through some shit in the past few days. Tomcat's right. I said I was fine. Thank you for your concern. But I am fine! It's okay to not be okay, bud. I have already handled the reality of Hayden's death. It's time to move on with the investigation. Okay. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. I'm, I'm just worried. Yeah. So, uh, I'm here if you need anything. Understood. <sighs> I apologize for my tone, Tomcat. We'll be in touch. Alright. Later, turn. Okay, we have a lead, however tenuous. I've highlighted the Cos IO Corp office building on your map. Okay. Also, while we were talking to Tomcat, I received an email from Dr. Fairlight. Displaying... At mail. Ah, greetings. I hope you'll forgive me for a voice-only message, but I'm undergoing my treatment and would not call myself presentable for a video call. Aww. Still, I wanted to inform you of an idea I had while looking into our mutual acquaintance's disappearance. Okay. I haven't had any luck with my contacts inside Parallax, 
but I was reminded of an old friend by the name of Melody Flores, who may know more about the nature of Hayden's research. Okay. She's the owner of Flower Cybernetics, and Hayden has been known to work closely with them on projects involving the intersection of Parallax's systems and the implants that Flower designs. Interesting. I legitimately feel like I'm in the world now of like somewhere between cyberpunk and Ghost in the Shell. Like this, even the timeline is roughly in the right spot. And according to oh, no, I can't say anything else without giving spoilers that for for some anime. But uh, watch, watch Ghost in the Shell sometime. Good show. Melody and I are no longer on speaking terms, so I'm afraid I can't introduce you. Aww. But perhaps the intrigue of Hayden's little robot will get you entry into her home. I don't like the way you say that. I hope this lead serves you well. If you need anything else from me, I will be in and out of the hospital room where we met for the next few days. Hmm. I will send word if I have any other insights or discoveries. Okay. Yours, Dr. Yannick Fairlight. All right. Interesting. I had no knowledge of Hayden ever working with Flower Cybernetics, but now I'm starting to understand just how little I really knew about his research. Yeah. Maybe this melody can reveal more about the purposes of my construction. I mean, it seems like the purpose of your construction was to see if it could be done and not enough thought was given to whether or not anybody was ready for that including yourself and i'm not certain at what point along the way like once we've made it to where we could have intelligent ai i'm not not a specialist in the field just a very interested spectator um like when you were in the process of giving thought to Silicon, at what point do you ask the Silicon, hey, do you want to continue thinking? And is that a messed up thing to ask if it is already sent to you? Hmm. Hayden must have kept my development secret for a reason. Y yeah, your own safety, bud. Hopefully, we can talk our way in. Yeah. I have highlighted Melody's home on your map. Okay. Okay, we can now either follow Tomcat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. Well, one of them... <sighs> Up to you where to go first. Oh, all right. So you say first, not one or the other, period. A little less concerned. Tomcat's then. led us in the right direction so far, but Fairlight has resources and his tip might end up being more relevant. Yeah. We also kind of owe Tomcat, and they already told their friend that contacted them that we would be on our way. It depends on what you want our focus to be on, in terms of tracking Hayden's trail. Should we follow the media, or the tech? They're both the tech. One's from the side, the angle of the media, though, and... Ah, uh, this character's supposed to be a journalist. So, like, they would want to... Ah... Uh... Hmm... Hmm. All right, folks. I'm leaving this one to you. We're putting up a vote. I'm not making this choice. Uh, go over here. Oh, wrong button. This one. Poll. New poll. Media or the tech. Go to news headquarters. Go to scientist house. Duration five minutes. 
I'll let you folks make this decision, but uh, please do answer, because I'm curious. I am I very much want to do both. And I get the feeling that even though it's giving us the option for both, uh, it is going to further weigh what options come next. Like This game, I, I can't quite tell if it's actually got like that many multiple choices, but it's starting to feel like it. And I'm really enjoying this. Meanwhile, I can get myself set up with rolling a thing. Uh, nobody? Nobody wants to vote? I got to make all the choices in this multiple choice book. <laughs> Maybe I should have just said it as one minute. I don't know, I'm feeling impatient. I'm ending this poll. It's a tie. And we're moving on. It's fitting. They're the two factors that make Neo SF so unique and wonderful. Not really sure I agree with that. If we explore them both to the fullest, there's no way we won't be closer to the answer. Oh, so you really are encouraging that. Maybe one day the disappointment of being unable to read these pages will inspire you to write on them. A stack of paper for your unpublished novel. Hayden gave this to you. The group is old, but the music is timeless. That's what he said, at least. Wilty seems to be hanging in there. Looks like you're going to be just fine after all. Bring Wilty back to outstanding health. Aw. Wilty is sparkling to the heavens. A top grade jade. Cute. You really pulled it off. I'm impressed. It's still alive, but not sturdy enough to touch. Oh, okay. Your once trusty machine's been downgraded to paperweight status. Okay, so this is all the same. I made sure to file it. I'm beginning to think they might be irresponsible. Oh, I'm certain of it. Maybe a botanist is a better idea. Still not fixed. The ooze grows ever larger. Did it try to talk back? Yes, the blob in the sink not to loiter. Did something just lash out from the drain? Running water might make it worse. Probably not a good idea to touch the slime. Okay, so nothing there actually happens. Okay, so all this stuff is the same. Turing made up the bed. They seem to like things tidy. Aww. Hayden was always an oppressive guy. But knew who who knew he was creating something someone so cool? Good job, character, for recognizing the individuality of Turing. It's Turing, your borrowed companion rom slash investigation Hi. buddy. Hey bud. I love the little heart. Okay, we can now either follow Tomcat. It depends right. on what you want. Up to you where to Ready to head out? Yep. Let's go.
So the Golden Gate Park was where the Froyo stand was. I'm curious. Oh no. A chalk doodle the police robbed that some kids drew. It's not bad. I want a chalk drawing of me. I've never considered the artistic potential of chalk as an instrument. Aww. It looks like some older kids got their artistic expression out on the poor police rom. They covered up its eye with spray paint. This bottle looks pretty old. It probably didn't even know it was being drawn on. Lexi's gonna be ticked. At least the message is one of love and okay. Hmm? Who is there? I cannot see a thing. I shall make a note to request more street lamps in this park. This is much too dark an area. Oh. Poor thing. It can't see at all with its optics painted over like that. It doesn't even know. Oh, I hate bullies! Hmm? Who is there? I cannot see. I shall make a note to. That spray paint isn't coming off, and you'll probably irritate them more if you start prodding. Now that Alfie broke the hose, this valve is pretty much useless. Yep, it's still broken. Who's that little guy? You! It was you who... Water! It seems he remembers we were his last customers. I... I need to refill my cool, refreshing water! I must! You reach out your hand, but they duck their head lower. With this, you could wield complete power over free refreshments. You. It seems he rem. Okay. The building was closed off in 1974 after suffering fire damage, but reopened in 1984 and has continued operation since. I'm impressed that it is still running. That is a very, very long time. Okay, Alfie. I'm... I'm sorry, bud. Uh, let's go talk to Lexi. Uh, uh... <laughs> I still like that. Welcome to the Neo San Francisco Richmond District Police Station, citizen. How may I be of assistance today? How are things in the department? Crime is down in this district by 12% this year. Thank you for your sustained interest in your local law enforcement. I mean, I have to keep an eye on you. Would you like to learn more about employment opportunities with the NSFPD? As a journalist? I'm good, bud. Your lack of civic duty has been noted, citizen. Wow. Have a nice day. I don't really do idle chatter. 
Understood. Welcome to Stardust. Hey, fellas. What are you having? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me look up how to make that. Drinktionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. This one is. Whipped cream, vodka, strawberry liqueur, creme de menthe, and soda water. I don't know. It probably wouldn't be too bad. Sweet and smooth, you don't realize will mess you. Yeah, I've had a few like it. Thank you, hon. Sure, I'll do Here you one. go. Thank you. Yep. Oh, hey there. Do you need something? Later, you two. Bye bye. Bye. No VIP access today. That's fine. I just wanted to talk. Hey, Broke. You know what I think is a cool name? Dog's Bower. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Hey, Jess. Oh, look. It's my favorite human and the mechanical sidekick. Yeah. I'm caught up in something at the moment. Chances are we'll cross paths again. Okay. Hey, more hot tips? I haven't reached the boss, but I heard that near the end it starts going bonkers. Don't worry, though. Something weird happens to your charge, too. They say you can just keep shooting. Dang. Don't worry about it. I don't get this game. This game here. The headphones radiation could screw the logic board inside the cabinet. If that happens, the unexplainable will transpire. Well, ah, that was so terrifying. However, I believe you beat it. A high score for sure. Interesting. Fantastic effort. I thought you were a goner near the end. I actually did too. Uh, hey, bud. I'm playing some other weird game that donated to the bar. It's all right. Feeling a bit weird. Even still, they probably won't get off the machine. Huh. You don't want to know about me? Totally into VR stuff. Got VR augments, this hard headset I hardly ever take off. Well, I'm also ace at games trivia, if you couldn't tell. Did you know the first games are flat 2D? 2D? 
two dimensions. How do people even live like that? Not A. Plus, sometimes I forget what things aren't on a screen look like. So I almost always have this headset on. I wouldn't have it any other way though. We've seen life in a crisp 10K, 120 frames a second. Huh. I heard that some people never take their headsets off, which can be really dangerous. Hey, my mom made sure I took mine off at least an hour a day. Yeah, folks, if you if you're doing the uh, no lifer VR thing, like I get it. Please make certain that you do take time to like eat and shower and all that because like your body needs it. You it, it you you can sustain yourself in a little pod environment. That's fine, but please take care of yourselves. Have some water. Like, whatever you gotta do. All right, after this, I'm getting a Hatsy, <clears throat> Hatsy, Ice Torch Octa. You should try it. <laughs> hey, have you checked out Mega Phobia Tour? Something doesn't seem right once you get to the boss, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. Do you like wrestling? I can't wait for NSFW New Year's <laughs> Smash! The Violent Wings, the Future Foundry, it'll be a real slobber knocker. I forgot to check what day it is on the calendar. I should also save. Party never stops with Stardust. Open 24 hours we a day. We really should stay focused on our goals, but I suppose I shouldn't rain on every parade. Go have fun. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Okay, have any of the posters changed? Refreshing. You drink your drink. Leak. Map. Market Street. Oh. You. Who, what? Huh. Okay. It has an extra. Moderately large tabby cat basks in its own self-satisfaction. Yes, it seems very satisfied about being a cat. I'm actually quite a fan of cats. They provided consistent entertainment online for me when all I had to do was sit around and search the mesh all day. Makes sense. Less complicated to figure out than humans are, too. Oh, by far. Aww. Oh, expert meow. meow. Holy cow, now that's a meow. Me, wow. Whoa, what a yawn. <laughs> uh. Hitting some buttons here real quick. Don't mind me. Okay, so that never resolved. Come back during Hassie Hour for buy one, get one on all Hassie flavors. 
Okay. No free hassy for you. Not even hassle free hassy. Patient, have you been recovering well? They're too busy handling the patient log to chat. Patient, have you been recovering well? You aren't sterile. How am I supposed to talk to him in the hospital? Hmm. All right. Well, let's try, I guess, the flower mansion. We'll talk to the scientist. <sighs> Is something wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. I was wool gathering. Could you elaborate? I see we've arrived at the Melody Flora's residence. It's quite impressive. Yeah. But that's to be expected, considering that she is still the majority owner of the Flower Cybernetics Group, despite retiring from day-to-day -day operations at the company. Okay. I wonder how she and Hayden first began working together. Oh. Sorry. Back on task. Is there anything you'd like to know before we head inside? Actually, yeah. Why don't you give me a rundown of Flower Cybernetics? Flower Cybernetics was established in the early 2000s by Melody's mother, Antonella. It started out developing cutting-edge medical tech, including advanced prosthesis and nanoparticle diagnostic and treatment technologies. They were vastly successful when they perfected the first synthetic nerve mesh, allowing direct connection and control between the nervous system and a cybernetic prosthesis. Whoa. The majority of their early projects were defense technologies for the American military. Of course. Developing ruggedized military prosthesis for use on injured soldiers, and then eventually electively for special forces. Mm-hmm. This research line culminated in the development of brain-controlled androids as shock troops, long since barred by international law. Melody took over the company from her aging mother, and she fought against developing further military hardware from that point on. Okay, I feel better about that then. She pushed the company to use the BCA technology for the company's original goals of medical advancement as well as developing the first direct link virtual reality implants. Direct link virtual reality? Wait. Like in the, the cyberpunk anime? Whoa. The company is largely successful on a global scale, despite continued legislative movement against extensive cybernetic use, especially brain implants. All right. Well, what can you tell me about Melody? The lead of it all. Hmm, not a whole lot. Okay. She's largely private, in contrast to her mother's penchant for courting a media circus. Ah. Several biographies of former Flower executives show her as intensely passionate about demilitarizing the company to the point of absolute viciousness in the boardroom. I mean, that... Good. But it's been a long time since her days of fighting for the company, and she's since stepped away from the helm. So, let me guess, they're back to the exact same thing. There's talk that she's lost her spine in her old age, but... Well, I take that with a grain of salt. She may have retreated from the corporate battlefield, but you don't change the entire direction of a company as large as Flower if you're a quitter. Stay on your toes. Okay. Didn't Yannick say that he and Melody had a falling out? Like, this doesn't seem like it's going to be the best lead per... How are we... How are we introducing ourselves here? He did, and I can't shine much light on that. 
I know that System 1 worked with Flower to help develop the first operating systems for the Direct Link virtual reality implants, so perhaps it happened during that time. Okay. Also, Flower eventually went with a different company for future models of the implant, but there was never any public talk of a personal falling out between the heads of the companies. Hmm. I'll scrape the mesh for more rumors, but they'll only be that. Rumors. Yeah. I can do my best to parse fact from fiction, but it blurs too much for me to be sure what's real. Alright, buddy. Let's go ahead and head inside. No time like the present, then. Small-scale bear statues guard the entrance to the mansion. They'd look cuter if they had little outfits on. Yes. <laughs> Goofball. It is a little bear. Wow. Hey, baby. What's her sign? <laughs> wow! That doesn't work if you know, like, it's her sign, not your sign. <laughs> The silence is unbearable. We're really doing this. You both are just polar opposites. These tall shrubs could line the estate of a Victorian duke. They're that stuffily pleasant to look at. Okay. They have the stale beauty that can only come from the care of obligated professionals. It's likely they have ridiculous maintenance routines as well. Like only being watered every Friday for exactly 38 seconds. No more, no less. Windows line the front of the house and broadcast the hints of an expertly designed den inside. It's framed with light blue curtains that probably cost more than your rent each. Two dark wooden doors make up the mansion's entranceway. A small foyer can be seen through the mottled glass. The doorway is crowned with a marble bear carving. Seems to be the theme here. This looks like the buzzer for an apartment complex. She needs one of these just for one house? It has the usual panel and speaker too, but the communication is usually only one way. You can't use the speaker without ringing the bell. Doorbells have traditionally been more of a push thing. What? 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 Uh... Hi? Is Melody home? What? Hmm... Sorry, bear with me for just a moment. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I wasn't even trying to make a pun there, it just happened. Mine says we can go in. Should we? I guess so. The door to the mansion is open. How did a bear ever turn the door handle? Oh, you... Bears have really dexterous hands, actually. You don't have any bear snacks on you, so be careful. I, I have spoiled milk. Also, the ad's about to run, so my apologies, folks. What a strange set of circumstances. I've been... I'm gonna go ahead and, like, pause for just a moment so folks can come back to it, but, uh... What a strange set of circumstances. 
I didn't think about the the idea of like cyberization um, with brain controlled interfaces for other sentient beings or other sentient organics because like it, uh, my entire life I've theorized that cats, kangaroos, dolphins and bears like and elephants and even ravens could all easily be elevated to a state of being considered uh, self evidently self aware and that wouldn't be difficult with our current technology like if you were to start 20 years ago you might be done tomorrow and if you were to start today who's to say when you would be done with some of these projects and with like future tech what could you do on your own the that would be wild just make your own brain controlled interface and give it to a bear ask the bear hey do you want to do you want to not be where you're currently at and come do something else and that bear could be like yeah sure what's in what's in the box what what's for food <laughs> like uh if you look at this in the same like time frame as as ghost in the shell this is like about 10 years before the Tachikoma were a thing. But, but like, it's not that far off in, in where we could be theoretically if you were to start on some of these projects today. It's, it's wild to me. Oh, wow. Swanky. Well, this place is cool. Swanky? What? I have been trying to increase my usage of colloquialisms. Okay. Is Swanky too out of date? Possibly. It's certainly before my time. Oh, Ms. Flores! Excuse us for the intrusion. My name is Turing, and... You have... An extra spot in your chair for your little, little little friend there. Oh, I know who you are. He... I can explain. I know you don't like Dr. Fairlight very much, but I assure you there's a situation. Fairlight? Hm. I didn't realize Hayden's research had become a charity case. Um. Though I suppose little boy Yannick will throw money at anything that raises his profile on the mesh. Ooh. Wait, you know Hayden? Also, we actually only just met Dr. Fairlight yesterday. Oh, that's too bad. Now Pat won't have to eat you. Huh. What? Though I'm not sure your gears would have been good for his digestion. Actually, madam, I'm not comprised of gears. <laughs> well... Either way, he's on a diet. Aww. This philosophy is how I lead my life. Sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear, well, he eats you. Sometimes you eat the bear? Do you understand? No. Not really. Look. I don't have all day to entertain you, Turing, nor your new friend. Not even for Hayden. You don't have time to waste if you're going to find him, either. Right. Strawberries, teapot, fainting chair, melody, a cat, pat, a rom, a monitor, a fountain, back door, a planter, a gardening rom. And a room control. Melody Flores, Nano Machine heiress and owner of the Flower Cybernetics Corp. Madame Flores is more of a royal figurehead at Flower these days. The group's board of directors make most of the major decisions in consultation with FCG's chief officers. Okay. The matron saint of a dozen causes has grown more removed in recent years. 
An earthquake couldn't sway her from her luxurious propose. The most regal looking robotic cat in the world sits prim and proper on the fainting chair. If it spoke any languages outside robotic meows, it could probably trace its lineage back to the cradle of jungle cat civilization. Lily here is a model based on the Persian River Cat, one of the newest designer breeds to be put on the market. Huh. They are prized for their traditional Egyptian features, despite being more directly related to a Chinese breed. Okay. Melody keeps unusual company. Well, hmm, uncommon. Ursus Maritimus, if I'm not mistaken. That might be why the temperature controls are set so low in here. Uh oh. Definitely a polar bear. I wasn't aware you knew the scientific name of the species. Ooh, has my interest in proper nomenclature started to rub off on you? <laughs> I mean, I think it was already a thing. He's a white bear turing. What else could he be? Plenty. Have you heard of a kermode bear, also known as a spirit bear? Or he could be a white phase black bear, or even a pizzly. A pizzly is... I never even knew that they could interbreed like that. But he's not. It's a polar bear. <laughs> okay. Hello, Pat. Yep. Definitely a polar bear. Unless she dyed his fur. Yep, definitely a polar Okay. So, uh, bear and stuff? <sighs> Don't be rude. Pat, what are the burdens you bear? An RO51E893 unit from the emblem on its side, it sits patiently near Pat in a sort of ambient sleep mode, playing light instrumental music. The Rosie series are the most socially organized ROMs, designed to track personal liaisons and maintain social calendars. Huh. It was nicknamed the Jane Austen Bot by Assets Magazine a few years back in its annual Mandatory Machines issue. Mandatory Machines. Despite it being in sleep mode and playing soothing music, you can feel this tiny machine judging you. The latest episode of Media Blitz is going into the sordid details of a new teen actor's island love affair with a local politician's daughter. These shows are just so demeaning, reducing the private lives of famous people to soap operas for the lowest common denominator. Oh, the Maritaki twins got thrown out of Doc's place for fist fighting that guy with the transparent hair. Wait, how is it this late already? A huge marble fountain adorns the courtyard. Its pleasant bubbling sound can just barely be heard over the TV and outdoor ambiance. A pair of wide open doors are set open in the back room, leading to a plush garden. It's a simple goblet design and its edges are rippled slightly so the water trickles off in curled rivets. It's a nice effect. A Malcolm model, Rob, is tending to the garden. Don't worry, they're just trimming that bush can be very important to the health of your garden to keep the bush nice and tidy. These puns. A large climate-controlled globe have towers in the lounge. There's some lively in-season plants inside. Out of all the healthy plants and interesting habitats you've come across, this one takes the metaphorical cake. Hey. Thank you for the follow, right? The plant to shape makes it look like the plants inside are reclined in one of those awesome sling chairs. If you were one of Fairlight's worker bees, you wouldn't have made it through the door. So why are you here to badger me about poor Hayden? You have me at a disadvantage, Ms. Flores. You seem far ahead of us on this matter. Just call me Melody, darling. And of course. But I'll share a secret or two with you. Okay. I have so many questions. Do you know what's happened to Hayden? I wish I didn't. 
Maybe you don't want to either. Please, Melody. Any information you might have. We haven't had access to any of his research notes and couldn't track down any collaborators he may have been working with. Perhaps if we know more, we might be able to nail down a solid motive. Well, I don't know if I can speculate on that beyond the usual corporate infighting. Not that Parallax is known for that, of course. Hmm. We had been catching up recently, and he mentioned feelings of being watched. He started to worry he had been discussing your development with the wrong people. When he stopped returning my calls, and now that you've shown up with a total stranger, it becomes clear what happened. I... I see. Can you tell us anything else about his disappearance? Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. I've been around long enough to know what's coincidence and what isn't. Hmm. We were hoping you might be able to shine some light on my origins. Fairlight mentioned that you had worked with Hayden in the past. I see Hayden didn't neglect curiosity in your personality makeup. Well, you and I haven't properly met, but considering how often Hayden badgered me for design schematics of Flower's latest neural implants, I might as well be your aunt. You know, I... <laughs> How many people are going to try... Oh, Turing. How many people are going to try and lay claim to being some distant relative or parent to you? We'll go with that. I wouldn't mind being an aunt. Even to a blue-headed robot. I'm touched, Melody. Well then, I'm willing to answer your questions. For now. Huh. How did you help Hayden with Turing? Indeed. I don't see the connection between your company and Hayden's research into machine sapiens. Oh, Hayden wasn't researching machine sapiens. At least not primarily. Not to diminish the importance of your creation, Turing. But it's best you know the truth. Hayden is mainly interested in developing a way to transfer human okay. consciousness into a machine matrix. Wait. 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 You can see why neural implants would obviously be an integral part of that. Is Turing a backup of Hayden? Give me just a moment. I'm going to grab some chocolate here. Why are you... Oh, that is not at all what I thought that was. Hello, random cricket. Always love seeing cave crickets. Okay. So today we have... Cinnamon, cayenne, and cherries in dark chocolate. <laughs> ah. Yeah, now I'm like, is... Is it just that Hayden died, or... Is Turing in part Hayden? Oh, I didn't realize... How would Turing's development help with digitizing the human mind, though? The concept of transferring the human mind into a computer has been an attractive goal for decades. And? Functional immortality is... a powerful lure. The brain is an immensely complicated machine. And even though we know the right buttons to push to make pictures show up, we still can't replicate the entire thing as a technological construct. 
Even with the virtual reality implants, we're really just relying on the brain's ability to make sense of nonsensical signals. So Hayden decided the best way to make a machine more like the human brain would be to work in the opposite direction. Instead of mimicking how the human brain worked, he started writing code that mimicked the functioning of the human mind. Hmm. Think of it like convergent evolution. Two species adapt in similar ways, but on completely different continents. So, attempting to reverse engineer the same functional... What did I just... One moment. I'm sorry, I just experienced a sensory input error. Neuropathy is a strange experience. Oh. Well, I guess we have a storm coming in sometime soon. Okay. So, is this in, in essence like an idea behind attempting to reach the same results and reverse engineering the functionality necessary? To, because, like, you can. There are a lot of ways to add up to the number nine that aren't whole numbers, and ways to go about that sideways that create completely imaginary things along the way. That doesn't mean that it's like a feasible or functional way that something would be created. And I know that life is a series of very strange choices that nature makes along the way in order to arrive to where we are, but... Hmm... Hayden is a crack programmer when it comes to information collating. It's why Parallax hired him when they did. Okay. So he wrote a bunch of self-modifying learning algorithms that were, <laughs> frankly, baffling and let them loose. Poke and prod them here and there to make sure they value the same things humans do. Hmm. And we eventually end up with you. Turing. Interesting. Hayden never revealed any of this to me. I imagine he's pretty tight-lipped. You were the first prototype he considered a real success, and he was afraid of contaminating your development before he had a chance to make good observations. Can you elaborate on your involvement? If you can even call it involvement. It's a small city. And if you're in the tech sector, you are never more than two degrees removed from anyone else. Okay. When he started looking into this pet project of his, he came right up to my door and demanded access to the research logs behind our earlier implants. Hmm. Cheeky, but it was impactful and disruptive, as they like to say around here. <laughs> I couldn't care less about Flowers' patents anymore, so I gave him what he wanted, just to see what he would do. I'm frankly more impressed than I expected I would be, but <laughs> don't tell him that. We won't. Don't worry. I won't. Oh, that was a compliment, dear. So, earlier you were saying that Hayden wasn't actually involved in Turing's development? Like, how so? I didn't say that. Okay. Hayden was quite interested in Turing, even if he is just a step to further research. I... In fact... He was preparing to publish his findings involving Turing. And I know it's going to make one heck of a splash in the scientific community. How do you know that? See, the most impressive part about you, Turing, is that you're surprisingly stock. I assure you, Melody, my construction involves only the latest and greatest in ROM prototype technology. Exactly. 
You're not off the shelf, but you're still just a souped-up ROM. More or less like every other one out there. Your personality algorithms are impressive, but they don't require some new space-age technology to work. That also means that, like in uh, humans, though, you could spread that sentience. Hayden is going to propose that human consciousness transference does not require special brain-like hardware architecture, but merely the right software wrapper to interface with the hardware. That's a backwards way to look at any of this. Much like how you function. Hmm. I suppose that is correct. Still, my personality matrices do take up substantial amounts of my processing power. Wouldn't custom hardware have capabilities that better serve such a demanding specialized task? Sure. There's still plenty of reason in trying to make a computer that works just like a human brain. Efficiency is an important part of that. But if Hayden can emulate the human mind in existing technology, it means we can start the immortality now, rather than waiting for hardware to catch up with Hayden's software. Frankly, I'm not terribly interested in living forever, but there's more than enough people who are. Thank you for this, Melody. I understand so little of my origins. Well, I'm sorry I don't know more of the specifics. Hayden kept me up to date on his progress, but only in the vaguest of ways. If you can hunt down his notes, I'm sure they'll tell you more. Hmm. Of course, we'll keep looking. Now, perhaps we could ask some other questions? Sure, sure. Well, what's the story between you and Fairlight? What happened there? Oh, hell, that old bastard and I have been flashing daggers at each other for the better part of 20 years. <laughs> I contracted out the software development for our first-gen Direct Link VR neural implants to System 1. Things were going great. But after the first model sold like gangbusters, Yannick tried to get into bed with me. Literally. Okay. I turned him down. Very politely, I might add. And then, suddenly all of the cooperation between our companies uh, dried up. I'm sorry. We've been at it back and forth ever since. I'd be damned careful about trusting him if I were you. I mean, his lead brought us to you, so that's its own thing, but I, I appreciate the warning. He's a snake, and he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Hmm. Still, I suppose if he tried again now, I might not turn him down. <laughs> <laughs> It would be fun to needle him about me still having my own company when he doesn't have his. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's everything we need to know. Good. I can get back to my retirement. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Melody. We'll be in touch later. Oh, one more piece of information for you, if you'd like it. Of course. I've got the contact info for a Vincent Mensa, who I think might be of help to you. Okay. Vincent was working more closely with Hayden inside Parallax, mostly on his company-approved research on data collating algorithms for the mesh. Hmm. Something that's auto-scanning. And so it might have somehow picked up the notes. I'll send him a Ish. message and ask him to meet you somewhere. Okay. He owes me a favor anyway, and might be able to give you some more information on anything else Hayden may have been working on. Hell yeah. 
That would be fantastic, Melody. Perhaps Golden Gate Park. Be careful, Turing. I don't like Fairlight stench all over this scenario. Don't show him too many of your cards. Understood. Cards? This euphemism is unfamiliar to me. <sighs> don't tell him anything if you can. Fairlight is more dangerous the more he's informed. Thank you, Aunt Melody. Wish us luck. Aunt Melody. Unless she died his... Pat, what is the meaning of life? Yeah, I think you might be right, bud. A room control monitor is fixed onto the back wall of the room. The temperature is set so low, it's freezing. It looks like an antique. It seems having all the money in the world doesn't mean much without your creature comforts. And your bears. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Guy. You've never seen this person. They appear to be waiting for somebody. Perhaps this is who you're supposed to meet? Only one way to find out. Can I help you? I, I don't really have time to talk. I'm waiting for someone. Um, are you Vincent Mensa? We're here for a meeting on behalf of Melody Flores. <laughs> oh good! You're Melody's people. Yeah. Do you have everything that I asked for? What? Uh, there must be some miscommunication. Melody said that you would be able to provide us with some information about Hayden Weber's projects within Parallax. He has gone missing, and any information we get may be useful. Damn that old woman! What? We had a deal! She promised me, and I'm not giving up anything until I get what I need. What do you need? I already know Hayden is missing. Why else would I be willing to sell corporate secrets to Flower? This was my chance to get out of the city. Instead, she sends the two of you, hat in hand with nothing. <sighs> I'm assuming you're Hayden's little pet AI? Do you have to say it that way, bud? Insulting, but accurate. Look. I'm sorry to come off callous. I... I do want to help. Hayden was a colleague and a friend, and I want to know he's okay. But I also need help getting the hell out of Neo SF, and now! My info is my leverage, and it's not for free. Um. I'll just have to find another buyer. Maybe after I make another deal, I'll be able to pass it to you. Hmm. Perhaps we could assist you? My friend here is a terrific journalist. Being skilled at hunting down people and information is part of the job. 
I don't know. Look, I need a hundred thousand credits, an untraceable car, and a fake passport for me and my wife, Francesca. Dang. If you can get me all that, I'll give you anything you want. Hayden's research notes, what I know about Parallax, my company's security credentials, whatever. Okay. If you're really sure journals can come up with that kind of stuff in one day. Could anyone else? Might? Do you mind answering some other questions first? Dear God, I'm doomed. Melody only gave us a rough sketch of what you need. The more you can tell us about the situation, the sooner we can fulfill your request. Uh, sure. As long as it isn't the juicy stuff. Yeah, just give us the dry stuff. I, whatever that means. What do you do for Parallax? I'm the head applications engineer for their data analysis division. Or maybe was, is what I should be saying. If Hayden is the big brain who comes up with the math that runs the search algorithms, I'm the guy who figures out how to collect and apply the data that we get. We've worked pretty closely for years, but he's head and shoulders above me as far as theory goes. Hayden built a fully independent machine intelligence in his spare time. True. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash myself here. I'm a good software engineer, probably one of the best. But machine intelligence? In a form factor like yours? Now that blows my mind. We've got full immersion, virtual reality, yet most people would still call you science fiction. Mmm, if you say so. So... Why are you so adamant about getting out of Neo Santa Fe? San because Francisco? Parallax is rotting from the inside out. Hayden going missing is the last straw, and it's a big ass straw. There is... Mm, how do I put this without giving it away? There's a new project about to roll out, and it's going to change everything about how Parallax does their business worldwide. Machine intelligence. Since the launch of the MeshNet, we've had some board shakeups, and the people at the top are different from the ones who've previously run the company. The altruism the company displayed in the past is gone. They're harder, more ruthless, and more concerned with profits and power than ever before. Hmm. Oh, we're in an ad. I'm going to wait here for a moment. I hadn't even thought about the idea that, like, you would have these major corporations that may have at one point been altruistic, actually wanted to do things for the betterment of, of society or people. That every once in a while, like, one in every 50 CEOs actually wants to do something and does. And then the rest of the time, it's just regular day-to-day -day cap capitalism. The, the awful ongoing machine that continues to burn all of our lives to the ground. And the world. And the world. Uh, Alright. Not just richest company in the valley power, either. Real power. My guess? Parallax got rid of Hayden because he was about to do something that would... Mm, get in the way of that. Hmm. If they're willing to get rid of the brightest mind on their payroll, what's to stop them from getting rid of me? There's a half dozen people who could do my job. So I'm getting out before I accidentally step on the wrong person's toes and end up at the bottom of the bay. Do you know anything about Hayden's disappearance? Nothing concrete. I probably wouldn't have noticed anything out of the ordinary. I mean, Hayden goes out for a couple days all the time, right? Conferences and guest teaching. He doesn't exactly share his itinerary with me. I tried asking around and no one will say anything. If he had jumped ship, went to a different company, it would be the talk of the week at the water coolers. Yeah, absolutely. Instead, dead silence. Thankfully, he allowed me to keep backups of most of his work, simply because I cross-referenced it so much. 
He didn't like having it all in one place anyway. Bring me what I asked for, and I'll tell you more. Thank you. We'll do what we can to get those things for you. Sure. I guess I can stick around here for a while. I need to make some calls anyway. If you do manage to get what I need, bring it here today and you'll get anything you want. Forwarding photos and info for the passports to Turing now. And I really hope you can do this. I'd rather give it to you than some other corporation anyway. See you soon. We'll see you soon. I'm not quite sure where to get fake passports or an untraceable car. The only shady folks we know are those punks who vandalized Hayden's apartment. I doubt they could point us in the right direction, but a long shot is better than no shot. They might agree to help us in repayment for the damage done to the apartment. They seemed remorseful. We should check Market Street for them, in case they regularly hang out there. So I really am going to do the disappointed mom thing and, like, go clean up the streets. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. As for the rest, perhaps Dr. Fairlight or Melody could spot us the credits. Maybe. That certainly is no small amount, but is unlikely to cause much consternation for either of them, assuming they are as dedicated to helping as they claim. Melody is assumably home as usual, and Fairlight did let us know he'd be at the hospital. You try and pit them against each other. We could ask either of them for assistance. Up to you to decide which would be a better course of action. There's so many places to go right now. Oh crap! It's that reporter in the bot again! Jeez it, Ollie! <laughs> Hold on a moment! We're just here to ask the two of you for a favor. You don't need to run again. I knew you didn't have the guts to mess with me! Uh-huh. Guts? Yeah, Nickelodeon Guts. And why would we want to help you? We did trash that apartment, Chad. <laughs> oh Yeah? Her. So? We also didn't report you to the police for it. Yeah? So? And they still could. Oh, all right, well, spill it then. I ain't got all day. Okay. Can't you see me and Oliver are busy? We I need mean... some assistance with some illicit activity that, statistically, individuals in your age bracket are likely to have experience with. Also, you're literally standing at a bus stop. I don't know what you're busy doing. Oh, so this is one of those things where you need a streetwise kid to show you the ropes. Yeah, sure. So, what's the thread? B and E, war driving, copyright infringement, search bombing. No, I think we're able to do all those ourselves. Is search bombing actually illegal? I mean, that's a DDoS, so yes, it is illegal. That is interfering with a uh, communications system. <laughs> it's against the terms of service, so probably, at least in California. Oh, in terms of service for some... Because in this case, the MetaNet is... The MetaNet mesh, as they're calling it, is a, a privatized, not... Um, it's it's not a utility. 
it's a private service and so their terms of service they it would be their laws i wonder like in in corpo world uh of the 2060s like how much judiciary force they have uh <clears throat> We need to buy some fake IDs. Today, if possible. Oh, that's nothing! If you can pay. Yeah. Ollie can whip up a couple that'll work good enough to get you past a bouncer or a cop doing sniff tests. He's a wizard with a printer and a lifted wallet. It's more complicated than that. We need falsified passports that can get two people past the border safely. Oh, yeah. I don't think Ollie can do that. Can you? Not without equipment a lot more expensive and illegal than what I already have. <laughs> Ollie, you know what's up, huh? What about that guy who got at least that unrestricted mesh card when she was on probation? Unrestricted mesh card? So access to different parts of the mesh are also limited. That's not really the same thing, Chad. But... It wouldn't hurt to give him a call. Give me a few minutes. This guy yeah. is pretty sketchy. Very cloak and dagger. I'll okay. have to play middleman. Thank you for the assistance. Excellent. I'll forward you the relevant documents and photos. Oh man, now I'm starting to feel left out. All he gets to show off all his cool connections. You sure you don't need someone's head kicked in a little? That's my area of expertise in our little duo. I mean, I might need your help later, bud, to be honest. Well, that and petty larceny. That's also an option. We might have something that will suit your skill set. Damn right, Herring. Let's just get the passports first, if you can stay calm for that long. You sure yap a lot more than any of the ROMs I've ever owned. What's the deal? You install some new conversation routines Ollie ain't had the chance to nerd out about yet? Something like that. Well, they're top notch! Very bleeding edge! Thank you. I don't run traditional ROM VI personality software. I am, in fact, the first fully sapient machine intelligence. Well, at least that I know about. Which means what exactly? In English. It means he's a person, Chad, not a toy. Now keep it down. I'm still on the phone. Oops. And yes, what he said. Well, that's awesome. You ain't so bad. For a tin can. Buddy. Tin can? Really? I'm composed almost entirely out of plasteel and silica. Has no one come up with better insults for robots since the turn of the century? ROMs have been out for almost two decades. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Give me a sec. I'm pretty good at name calling, too. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry I brought it up. Accidental inclusiveness. Oh, I hate this. He's trying, he's trying, like, the wrong way. Oh, thank you, Maggie. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a logo thing that I ended up doing for my, my other model, and I was like, you know what, I should do it on this one as well. And I've completely forgotten when I started working on this that I was going to end up putting the, the bottom logo, because I didn't want to have it on every one of my outfits. But then, like, every time I put this one on, I, I forget to take the bottom logo off. Just like, eh, whatever. It, it is me. <laughs> Just hold on a second. Underclocked? Oh, Bitbrain! Bitbrain's not bad. Don't hurt yourself, Chad. I'll get back to you, Bubblehead. Bubblehead? Okay, so you're calling out, like, physical characteristics. Kind of messed up, but... Okay, I talked to the guy. He said he'll do it, but he only works in trade. Mm. A couple of passports are gonna run us... 
one signed poster for Magical Commander Yukino, Yukino at the Gates to the Deep? Huh? Heh! <laughs> Course! It's always that Japanese crap! It's not my fault they make the best VR dramas! Maybe you can do better? Probably! Anyway, where can we get a poster like that? I'm not sure. Probably nearby. I've done switches with this guy before, and he never asks for something that'll take too long to get. My guess is he's a local that uses people like us as a way to nab something he's had his eye on. We'll help you look for it. Chad and Oliver have joined my party. Interesting. So, what can I do with Chad and Oliver in my party? Like... If I needed somebody's head kicked in. Uh, uh, I got I got other conversations to have. Let's go get some hassy. Oh, there it is! Huh? I knew I saw a poster for Magical Commander Yukino somewhere around here. I should have remembered Ramona had one. You know this lady? Sure. We talk sometimes when I'm getting our drinks. You're usually too busy provoking people to notice. <laughs> you call it provoking. I call it spontaneous enthusiasm for healthy rivalry. There's mm. a bit of a line. We'll have to wait a few minutes before we can talk to her. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. We could just do a smash and grab. Simple and effective. We can't do that. She knows who we are. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Us too. I'm doing good. Um, Got some work done on, on the alerts and stuff today. I also hold some more audio that I want to mess with, but I'm going to have to... I don't know, just spend some time messing around in VR and recording green screen content, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's been a good day. I got to meet um, one of the members of the Polycule who moved up to Colorado Saturday, I think, and came to visit today, so that's pretty cool. Uh, one of my metamores and just really chill person, so I'm excited. Yeah, stream upgrades! We got uh, new follower alerts, new subscriber alerts, and a uh, new raid alert, and I've got more stuff in the works. Also, I made some killer ramen and some ajitama last night that have been marinating since last evening, and I uh, made really good ramen to go with it. It's been a pretty good day. This is the most boring felony I've ever been an accessory to. Sorry, bud. Look, we'll just stand in line. Like a bunch of clumps? Er, chumps? What is the big picture anyway, Blue Bomber? Blue Bomber. I'm not sure it's wise to spread it around, Chad. For either of us, the less you know, the less reason anyone has to bother you. Screw that, Static. I'm not heading to Juvie not knowing what for. <laughs> spill the beans, or I'll spill them for you. Uh-huh. Your persistence is already legendary, Chad. Fine. If you really must know, we are going to trade the passports for some information regarding the disappearance of my creator. His apartment was the one you trashed. Oh shit, that Hayden dude is your dad? And they snatched him? That oh, Hayden so dude is up. your dad? <laughs> well, dad after a fashion. He raised me. Man, I hope you find the dudes that took him. 
I hope he's okay. It seems very unlikely. Oh, man. I don't know what to say, you know? I mean, I still have my dad, but he's... Chad? He's never really been around. Too busy trying to save the world from itself. Oh. Even now, he's over there standing in front of that damn clinic. Oh. I couldn't have told you to kick his head in. And I thought I could find a way to make him... Whatever. Chad. Starfucker. Wow, I actually said his name. I mean, that is his name. Uh, your dad's a complete jerk and needs to stop doing what he's doing. You're right for being frustrated with him for this. I might as well nuke that drive. Mm. It ain't gonna sink. It's a good metaphor. I think I understand what you mean, Chad. Hell yeah! Dudes gotta stick together, you know? Dudes? <laughs> you're being lumped in, Turing. Don't matter if you're a robot or what. We all got the same shit to deal with. Gotta grab Destiny by the horns and make your own mark! Your metaphors are something else, Star. Pretty open-minded for a kid who tags for the HR. The human revolution. Fascists. I was all mixed up, officer! I ran in with a bad crowd! I'm a good kid, I promise! Uh... Look, I'm not a true believer or nothing. Okay. I've got my own reasons for running with the revolution, and you ain't got the right to judge me. No, I suppose I don't. Besides, I'm pretty much done with those chumps anyway. There ain't no payoff no more. Was there ever? Most of the kids in the HR just want to cause trouble and get away with it because their parents agree with the politics. Ew. Huh, <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. Who the hell wouldn't want to enjoy a little parental approved head cracking? Ah, uh, buddy. Whoop, the line has finally cleared up. Let's go talk to Ramona. Yeah. Hey, Allie. Salutations, Ramona. <laughs> what can I do for you all? Oh, this is my friend, Chad. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. We were hoping you might be able to give us your assistance, Ms. Rogers. We want to make a trade for that Magical Commander Yukino poster over there. It's yeah. necessary for us to get some pretty important information. <laughs> no way! Not happening! Nuh-uh! Yukino is off-limits! This is literally a matter of life and death, Ramona. How does life and death depend on a nerdy poster? Look, I don't even care. That poster was signed by Takeko herself. It's one of a kind, and I'm not giving it up. I'd rather not drag you any further into this than necessary, but I promise that we're not overstating it. This is a dire situation, and people have already died. Jeez. Look, whatever you're doing sounds sketch as hell. I and Magical Commander Yakino herself want no part in it. I don't even see how the poster can help. Man, you nerds sure do love your cheap crap from the net. Cheap crap? I'll have you know that poster is worth hundreds of credits. Maybe more. 
Takeko passed away years ago, so there aren't any more of them getting signed. It's special. Sure it is. Urgh! He doesn't get it. He's not in the fandom. Thankfully. We can try to get you another. It'll only take a few days. It's not just a poster. It was a gift from someone. Oh. Someone I care about, okay? Besides, you can't get another one. Takeko passed away a few years ago. Perhaps there's something else that would make a suitable trade? You aren't hearing me, are you? Turing isn't, no. You, you said all you needed to. It has sentimental value. Yeah. You can't replace that. Look, you'll just have to order something off the mesh because you can't have this one. Oh, we don't have time. This lead will dry up by then. Keep me out of this. Please, Ramona. Okay, enough. How about this for a trade? I have an original keyframe cell from Pretty Champion Sailor Sirius, signed by Takeko at home. Whoa! You have a signed Sailor Sirius cell? That's super rare! They stopped doing keyframes by hand right around the time of her death. You can't be serious, Ollie! You have that thing framed on your wall! Anyone shut up about it for a week after you got it! This is important, Chad. You can't say you wouldn't do the same thing if someone had your dad. Think about Turing. I can't ask Ramona to give up something important to her if I'm not willing to do the same. Maybe. Look, okay, I don't know what's going on, but you can't give me that cell for the poster. But we need... Yeah, yeah, you'll get the poster. Whatever you're doing, it must be really important if you'd be willing to give that up. Do you have something more equal to trade, Ali? A couple of things, maybe. We'll talk about it then. Maybe you can find me another one, too. Go ahead and take the poster. Oh. You got the signed poster. Thank you, Ramona. Yes! I can't tell you how much it means to us, Ms. Rogers. Sure, sure. And, uh, you think I could see that cell sometime, Ollie? <laughs> of course! I'll bring it over when we talk about the trade. So cool! Cute. Just look at the menu and pick a drink, then give your order to the Hassy Rom. Hassy. You go for another with a Neo Hassy. How about a super large Hassy? Please don't touch the Hassy Rom. Hassy. <laughs> Okay, let's get going. Gaze out window? <clears throat> it may be nice outside, but it's always hard to leave a hassy bar. Especially because this is a window, not a door. <laughs> I don't like the way she was flirting with you, Ollie. What's wrong with that, Star? What are you talking about? I know flirting when I see it, and I'm saying I don't like it. Not one bit! Why? We just talk about old anime sometimes, Chad. Neither of us are interested in the other. Huh. <laughs> sure. Well, we have the poster now. What's next? Go ahead and call this number, Turing. He'll want to set up the drop with you, now that I've introduced you to him. Sure. Change the subject. <laughs> uh, I'll call him right now then. It's ringing. You the ones looking for some papers? 
Yeah? We are, and we have the requested payment with us. Good. We're gonna do this real professional-like. You know Stardust? <gasps> okay. We are about to hit an ad break here, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually do my official five-minute break. It's been going for a little while. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stretch my legs, refill my water here. I recommend you folks do the same because we have been here for a minute and we'll be back in just about five minutes. See you all shortly.
This is such a jammy little song. I love it. <laughs> All right. Let's get everything reorganized on the, the stream here, and we'll continue our little story. Where is that? Be right back text. Uh-oh. What did I do? There it is. Okay. I do. Head there. Leave the poster behind the Megaphobator arcade cabinet and get out. Come back ten minutes later and your stuff will be behind the machine. I understand. Good. I'll be waiting. Well, that was very mysterious. It certainly was. Yeah, that's how this guy is. I don't even know his name, and I've been getting things from him for a few years now. Interesting. Who cares? Let him play Spy Master if he wants. Let's hurry up to Stardust and get this over with. I've wasted enough of my day with this crap. Yeah, I guess the, today hasn't been as good for you as it is for me. <laughs> okay. To the Stardust Club. Go inside to make the drop. We'll wait out here. Yeah. Don't want to get our IDs taken. I suppose I should feign surprise. Hey! It's a pretty cool set! Even if it is like a million years old. They don't really care about the IDs unless you try to hit the bar. Found that one out the hard way. Mm-hmm. We would have been fine if you hadn't taken a swing at the bouncer. Oh, they're really cool and blue. Hey there, Koi. How's your day going? Ohayo gozaimasu. So I like the hard way. <laughs> I mean, they are tall, blue, and pretty burly. We'll be right back, gentlemen. Try not to set the building on fire while we're gone. Or inside it. Welcome to Stardust. Just home from a cold day of work, starting some new bread. Heck yeah, it's a good way to warm up the house. Welcome to Stardust. Hey guys. I... I'm not gonna get a drink today, I'm sorry. Broke, what's up? Hey, did you know that I'm in a multicast VR drama with NSFW champion Kiri Giri Soda? No. She's the world heavyweight champion. That's awesome. Tell me more. I can't wait for the NSFW wrestle or get married show. <laughs> You never know if it's going to be a match or a marriage. Aw. Or both. Or both. <laughs> it's a bit too scary. This game looks kind of freaky. All the lips and eyes. should do it. Hey there, Baconator. That was an awful lot of fuss over a poster. How's your day going, hon? I just don't understand the appeal of merchandise like this. I keep my important possessions on my data drive. Well, your important possessions to you are data. They're just raw information. Other people store external memories. And some of those are externally bound to scents, olfactory things like perfume, or in some cases, old photos or paintings. And in this case, there's a sentimental value behind the attachment to a person who took part in creating a, a piece of media that is important to them. Shh. 
Humans don't have total recall like you do. Ah, that is true. Ramona seemed more concerned with it being a gift from a friend than as an item of importance in its own right. Mm hmm Perhaps it is necessity to keep such things around as tokens from better times. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps I should pick up a few things from the apartment. Whatever's left. You know, maybe we should stop by there. I do have perfect recall. But a few of Hayden's things would be nice reminders. Memories are better for remembering than reading. But that's enough navel-gazing. Na- You and the colloquialisms. Let's head back outside so our benefactor can make the trade. Wool-gathering and navel-gazing. Y'all do the deal? How did it go? We left the poster behind the cabinet. Now we just need to wait for the switch. I've never had to wait more than five minutes or so before. It shouldn't take long. I wonder how he knows the drop happened, and gets to it so fast. Because he's literally standing there not interested in the game. Don't matter. This guy's a solid feed, even if he likes to mess around. What do you need these passports for anyway? You said to trade for information, but what's the full story? Without going into too much detail, our informant needs to get out of Neo-SF unnoticed. The passports are one part of that. We also need to obtain an untraceable car. I don't suppose the two of you could help with that? No way, dude! Grand Theft Auto is a felony with a capital F! Besides, getting an untraceable car ain't in the same league as a piece of plastic that'll fool a hand scanner. Chad's right. Of course I'm right! <laughs> the city's traffic management system keeps mm. track of all vehicles mm -hmm. passively, even if you manage to circumvent their firmware and keep them from actively reporting to the network. You have to spoof the car as something permitted to be invisible for the CTOS to ignore it. I don't want to mess with boosting cars anyway. The junks run that racket in Neo SF, and they don't play nice. Okay. Especially with the HR. Well, thank you either way. You've both done us a huge favor. Call it even for the apartment. Yeah, Blue. No hard feelings. Oh. You give us a call if you need anything else, long as it'll help you find your pops. Thanks, Star. We should get going, though. We were supposed to be home hours ago. My dad won't notice, but Ollie's will flip. Oh, all right. You take care. Don't you get too. de -rezzed. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Goodbye. Let's finish the trade inside. Welcome to Stardust. Oops. I feel bad for interrupting that guy. If you had to rank the friendliness of every bouncer you've met, they might fall on the higher end. Find another place to be. Oh, okay. There aren't really ghosts in this game, right? I mean, I haven't noticed yet. You broke Lappy, so I won't know about the part where it, like, infects your, uh, your laptop at home. Broke, what's up, bud? I wonder if they'd like to go on an adventure like ours. I'm not against the thought of adding allies to our party, but perhaps another time. Understood. Broke's pretty cool, though.
Oh, right, I have to go check behind the thing. Welcome to Stardust. Wait. Huh? Oh, okay. Here the passports are. Now we need to find a car. Jess is right over there. Perhaps she may know someone who can lend a hand. Hmm. I guess we could try. Well, prepare yourself. If Jess is the worst thing we have to face down this week, I'll consider us lucky. <sighs> Jess is a cool person. She's just gone through a lot. Did you find your guy? Or wait, let me guess. There's something else you need from me. Well, you haven't been terrible to deal with so far, so I'm willing to hear you out. Barely. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. We need access to an untraceable car. An informant of ours needs to get out of the city without attracting the attention of Parallax and is offering valuable information to us in exchange. Seriously? Jesus, what kind of shit is in your life anyway? Well... Actually, don't answer that. I don't want to be legally liable. Yeah... I'm not sure why you think, just because I defend a few folks in the rougher parts of the city, that I would have that kind of connection. And even if one of my clients did run a carjacking business, it's not like society is clamoring to give hybrids legal jobs. Regardless, I'm not going to be an accessory to a felony, or let one of my clients be either. I won't go down that path. I wouldn't know where to start anyway. Hunter, how's it going, hon? Is there any possible way you could give us any kind of lead at all? Whoa, no angry face. I know we're reaching, but this is important. You just don't quit, do you? Okay, let me think. This might be a long shot, but you could try asking Majid. There are rumors he may have been involved in some shady stuff way back in the day. Majid? Yeah, he did say that. He'll probably be reluctant to talk about it, but there's a free lead for you. Thank you, Get Jess. me another drink in exchange, will ya? Later. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Huh. That went better than expected. I wonder if my charm is starting to pay off for us. Terry. <clears throat> oh, you performed admirably as well. Onward we go. Oh, hey there. Do you need something? I'd like a drink, please. What are you having? Coming right up. I'll ask Gus if I don't know what it is. He's better with the weird kind of stuff people ask for these days. Some of these cocktails make me need a spa day. Yeah, bud. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry about stealing your thunder. This one is... A couple of these will make your tongue feel vel velvety. More of them and you'll be sleeping soundly. Sweet and sour. Does that sound good? Uh, something else. I don't think... Like what? Yeah, I don't think that she would want that. Coming right up. I'll ask Gus if I don't... He's better with a weird... Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. This one is... 
Mild long-lasting beer intended for a slow buzz inside a fancy cup. The side of the glass is an LED screen of the fun digital game. Take a drink every time you beat a level. Does that sound good? Like what? What are, what are these options? Den Svenska Björkstammen. Coming right up. I'll ask. What? What He's is better with the, the weird? Please Ooh. stop saying things that are I make me uncomfortable, Majid. <laughs> Sorry about that. this one. Is pure vodka as a base and spice, but the outermost layers of stems and roots of rare Swedish woody plants. A Nordic raw food-inspired drink gone wrong. A taste of Swedish nature. Does that sound good? Everything I ask you about sounds like what? Like something that would really, really upset Jess to be served. Uh, coming right up. He's better with a weird. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about this one. Is bourbon, lime, water, agave, ice. Perfect. Yeah. Let's give her that. Does that sound good? Yep. Here you go. Thank you. I gotta go talk to a lawyer. <laughs> huh. Actually did it, huh? I mean, you asked for a drink. Well, you scored a point. But don't think I don't have enough cuties around who can handle that. I... I... Yes, okay. You've got more important things to be doing. Get a move on. Yes, dear. Majid. Hey, friends. What can we get for you? I have questions that are probably going to make you uncomfortable this time. We were hoping you could give us a little information. Sure, but first, let's get you a drink. <laughs> What'll it be? Uh, she's... She's gone through some shit, and I fully understand and get it from a, a deeply personal level. Um, her expectations for society are a lot higher than most others would be because because she has seen some shit. I get it, and it it's endearing to me in a strange way, I guess. <laughs> I didn't want to drink. Rusted. Coming lace. right up. I'll ask. He's better with a weird kind of stuff. Ooh. Uh -huh. This one is. Cinnamon, schnapps, coconut rum, crushed ice, whipped cream, and a candy cane. Only ordered by awesome Does people. Does that sound good? I guess so. I guess that's. Here for you me, go. Then. Thank you. So, oh, what looking. did you need help with? We've run into a roadblock in our search for Hayden. Word on the street is that he's gone missing, which I'm sure you already know. What can I do? Um, yes. An informant of ours needs secure transportation out of the city, but we don't have any contacts who would be able to get us an untraceable car. Jess mentioned that you used to engage in certain extra-legal activities. Perhaps you could point us towards someone who could help? Uh, he doesn't do that kind of stuff anymore. Right. Sorry, friends. I left that life behind a long time ago. <laughs> Don't really keep in touch with that crew anymore. Ah, of course. Completely understandable. Sorry to bother you, then. Well, no harm in asking, right? My reputation precedes me. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> Gus, I need to go to the back and gather up stuff to restock for the rush later on. Mind manning the bar for me? Take your time. I think I can keep things under control. Thanks. Love you, hun. Well, that leaves us at a dead end. Any ideas on how we should proceed? I'm not sure. Some nose-to-the-ground journalist techniques for finding leads?
Maybe there's another way out of the city. That's a thought. Perhaps the light rail or a ship. Let me run a quick mesh net search. No, I don't think that will work. Parallax themselves designed the operating system that runs the light rail. Remaining unobserved while right under the nose of the railway security system would be difficult, if not impossible. As for a ship, we'd run into the same problems as with a car. They aren't hooked into the CTOS, but they do use active GPS guidance for automatic destination control. We'd have to find a way to remove it from the grid. Unlikely. Uh, um... Maybe we could find an old manually driven car. That's not the worst idea. I don't think it would get noticed as long as the car had the appropriate registrations. But the permits to operate a manual vehicle are prohibitively expensive. Hmm. A casual collector might still maintain one, but only a wealthy hobbyist would have the appropriate stickers to make the car roadworthy. We'd have to do a B and E, as Chad put it before. Risky. No. Okay, okay, the two of you are killing me here. Look, don't tell Majid about this. Yeah, I guess. But... Here. What? What is this, Gus? Just? It's an automated vehicle maintenance scanner with a few less than standard upgrades. Uh -huh. When you circumvent its security codes, you can use it to scan a car's installed firmware and replace it with a new set that will spoof its presence on the city's network. That's the gist of it, but we don't have time to get into any specifics. You need to get the hell out of here with that before Majid gets back. Thank you. Look, Majid has done a lot to turn his life around, to turn my life around. I really respect that about him, and it's part of why I fell in love with him. He did what I was never able to. That's how we met, you know. That old rough-and-tumble life we both led. But when Stardust struggled and needed money fast, I had to get back in the game to keep us afloat for a few years. I told him it was all angel loans, donations from patrons, lots of things. He'd be heartbroken if he found out I'm still in the game. I had to do whatever I could to keep our new life, even if only one of us is really living it. God. I may as well give this thing to someone who wants to use it for good, too. God. I can't tell you how much we appreciate this, Gus. We might finally be on our way to solving this mystery. Yeah, well, you didn't get it from me, okay? Just get out of here and get on with your little Grand Theft Auto. Yes, and sir. let me know how it goes, okay? <laughs> yep. From one Chaos Goblin to another. Of course! Um, Majid. Cheers, buddy. If you keep this up, you'll need to find a bathroom. Interesting. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> Well, now I think we're cooking with gas, as the colloquialism goes. It's like real life. Where's the bathroom? I'm searching the mesh for instructions on how to use this device as we speak. Let's go look for some likely candidates. I should be ready by then.
<laughs> go to the police station. Can't go to Hayden's place, but we can go to Market Street. It has an extra... You tell the car to stay parked. It doesn't recognize your voice, so it doesn't respond. Different beans? Same outcome. It's still a victory for you. Oh, rats! This car has the wrong firmware installed. We won't be able to install our new firmware over top of it. Okay. We'll have to check another car. All right. set off. Did I do something wrong? Let's get out of here before someone contacts the authorities. This isn't going well, buddy. Hey, Pat. Hello, Pat. Could we see Melody? I guess that means yes. I suppose so. Hello, Melody. Touring. I'm not saying I don't like seeing your little pixelated face. You're certainly better company than most of the humans I have to deal with. But I am a busy woman, you know? Lots to do. Right, Pat? <sighs> Traitor. <laughs> anyway, maybe we should space these little visits out a good bit further. Hmm? Understood. Familiarity breeds contempt, after all. And I'm very good at contempt. I apologize, Aunt Melody. You've stated before that you like your peace and quiet, but we need your assistance. Oh, we're running with the aunt thing, are we? Another woman would tell you not to butter her up, but, <laughs> oh, flattery will get you everywhere with me. Okay. All right. What do you need? Vincent needs help getting out of the city. I can only imagine. If he's willing to turn coat on Parallax, I bet he feels like a mouse in a cat farm. I know they don't actually farm cats, Pat. It was a metaphor. <laughs> wow. Whatever. It, it was a simile then. I am not going to play semantics with you. Moving on. Tell me what the trouble is, and I'll try to conjure up a solution. Oh. It is a robotic Egyptian cat. <laughs> uh, we're going to need to pay for the information. Yes, Mr. Mensa says he needs 100,000 credits before he's willing to speak openly. He also said that you already promised it to him, and that he won't be able to get out of the city without it. He'll give us the information once we have that, plus a few other things I'm certain we can get on our own. What? You can't even scrape together that kind of money? I'm a journalist. Your friend's not much of a journalist, eh, Turing? Uh... 
According to the statistics that I have found, it is unlikely that a journalist of any caliber less than the best would have that amount of liquid assets on hand. The pay for the profession just isn't that high, Aunt Melody. Oh, I see. I guess it's one of those jobs people do because they get free review merchandise, eh? I can get you the money, Turing. But only because you're family. <laughs> Just give Pat a few minutes to gather it. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Just keep moving, you big brute. While we wait, is there anything else you want to grill me over? Might as well save us both another visit. Okay. Maybe Turing has something to ask. I... I do. It's a little personal, though. I'd understand if you didn't feel like answering. Just shoot, Turing. I can take it. Long ago, you lost your mother. I was wondering, how did you deal with it? Hayden's only been gone for a few days, and I already feel like my circuits are going to lock up for good. Oh, Turing, I'm not the right person to ask. I hated my mother. She's everything I thought wrong in the world, and when she was gone, I felt nothing but relief that I could start undoing the damage she did. Um. Never mind the fact I had to watch her waste away from the cancer. <sighs> Death was a blessing for us both. Besides, you'll find Hayden soon. Keep your chin up. Oh. Blast it! Enough with this subterfuge! We already know Hayden was killed. Oh, no. And she continues to smile. I won't be getting him back. I'm sorry, Turing. I still don't know what to tell you. I've lost people, but... Never anyone close enough to wound me. I, I, I don't know that I've ever had anyone close enough to do that. If you feel like talking about it, I'm willing to listen. That's sweet of her. Or make Pat do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Stick it out. Time heals all wounds. Or so they say. Or so they say. This too shall pass. So how smart is Pat? Smarter than I give him credit for, that's for sure. It's not the easiest thing in the world to measure, you know? Yeah. He doesn't process language in the same way humans do, and even if he can understand me, my translation program just guesses at what he says most of the time. Oh, you have a translator running from your neural implant. Ah, yes. I'm cheating. Though, honestly, even without it, I have a pretty good idea of what he means most of the time. Aww. We've been together for a while now. Considering it only really works on large, typically predatory mammals, we don't have a lot of test subjects. It's a minefield of ethical concerns beyond just being prohibitively expensive. So Pad is a bear apart. At least until we can figure out how to apply the modified neural pathways without frying the brains of 90% of the subjects. How many other subjects were hurt in the process of Pat becoming how he is? The tech we developed is good. It just has a damned high mortality rate. 
Maybe one day there will be a bunch of talking tigers and dolphins building cities in the sea, but for now, we're stuck with creating beasts out of our own species. Hmm. It seems a little sad that you're all alone except for a bear. Being alone is easier, and Pat isn't such bad company. I mean, what do you want me to do? Cry about never having a husband, a few kids, and a white picket fence? <laughs> Absolutely not. I had a company to run, and my mother's legacy to fix. What's to say some spawn of mine wouldn't do the exact same thing to my flower, just the other way around? Militarize it. This branch of the Flores line will do well without any more knives being inserted in backs. Thank you very much. You have that much enmity for your mother? Have you seen what she did to North Korea? It's a wasteland of death and destruction. If we had kept going down the path she charted, the whole world would be like that. The information on the mesh does seem to paint a grim picture. Grim barely scratches the surface. I've been there. At least under the Kims it was barely functional. Now? My mother's monsters have ripped every last resemblance of humanity from the land. They stalk the night like horrific creatures of legend, keeping the populace in line through constant fear. A horror story straight out of the pages of Bram Stoker. That's her legacy. Whoa. So I can't imagine I'd be a very good mother. Just from the example I have to work with. <sighs> That's life. I don't have any more regrets than anyone else my age does. My legacy will speak for itself, as my mother's did. Well, we're short on time. Just in time, then. Take the cash and get moving. A I can briefcase. finally get back to whatever it was I was doing before you burst in here. Thank you, Aunt Melody. Your help has been invaluable to us. Yes, yes. Brown knows later. <laughs> You've got things to do, too. We. Everybody keeps telling us that. It looks remarkably bored at all attempts to conversation. Whoop. Apparently he doesn't have translation for my my vocal software. I did not think I would feel such a strong resonance with Melody. We're connected by the barest of threads, but she is already important to me. Is that strange? It's... that happens with some folks. Maybe you're both lonely. Very possible. I guess there's nothing to do but run with it. Correct. Some gifts are too valuable to look at too closely, lest they vanish into thin air, and I already have a penchant for overanalyzing things. And I think it comes with the territory. Let's get moving. Okay. We still have things to do before we can meet back up with Mr. Mensa. True. Detective Rivers, to what do we owe the pleasure? I wanted to check in with you away from the prying eyes of my corporate masters. <laughs> It Good. wasn't too hard to track you down here. I only took a slight abuse of power to follow your credit transactions in the AutoCab system. <laughs> uh, so, were you able to find anything out? Not much. Listen, I've hit a dead end on the investigation again, and I could really use another lead from the two of you. Okay. 
I had been busy hunting down a... I'm not sure if I want to call him a soldier of fortune or an assassin for hire. Whoa. Either way, I tracked this guy down to see if he might have been hired by Parallax to snatch Hayden, but he's got an ironclad alibi for the relevant period of time. That leaves me with nothing. Nada. Jack diddly shit. Do the two of you have anything to give me? Otherwise I'm back to hunting down the Froyo-hating robot ghost in the park. At least my superiors would be ecstatic, considering how much they keep writing my ass about it. We're on thin leads ourselves, Detective Rivers. We have a meeting with someone from inside Parallax who might be able to give us answers, but he's unlikely to want to talk to the police. I wish... I just... wish this... <sighs> never mind. Buck up, Turing. I wish this was easier, too. But with detective work... Sometimes it's not about being clever, it's just about being more dogged and relentless than whoever you're chasing. You two are my new deputies, right? Thank you, Lexi. So keep your nose to the ground and keep digging. I still have a few contacts I can hit up to try finding out a little more. Deputy Diggy Dog, we dig, dig, dig. You let me know if there's anything else I need to be going after. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lexi. Yeah, sure. Just get going. Don't forget, if you die, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> okay, then. We only have a single lead. If Parallax really is as shady as Vincent seems to suspect, it could end up very interesting. Let's see if we can put an end to this. Finally. Oh, I just received an email from Tomcat. Hmm. They finished decrypting Hayden's data cache. It seems that it was filled mostly with his personal logs about my creation and mental development. The more technical information was already scraped. Perhaps that is why it was left behind when they snatched him. Still, these files should be enlightening, if only in a personal way. I'll peruse them in my spare time and let you know if I find anything interesting. Okay. I'd hate for all the trouble we went to to be for nothing. It's not for nothing. It's a deeply personal journal. I think it's going to be important to you. Super spoiled milk. Same car. I told you, I'm not telling you anything else until I- Okay, bud. I don't have anything that I could give it that would make it happy. Does show a car part here. Two cars. It has an extra cup holder. Success! This vehicle has the appropriate firmware version. Okay. Someone has been neglecting their regularly scheduled updates. Give me a moment to get everything um. installed. There. Hmm. There are some other options here I can fool around with. Ah, interesting. I can put in preset destination plans for a future date. Huh. Why don't we go ahead and set a plan for the car to return to this spot in a week? Nice.
that's more than enough time for Mr. Mensa to get away. Now we aren't really stealing the car. Just borrowing it. More like borrowing without asking. Mm hmm I feel better already. Me too. The car will drive itself to Golden Gate Park, and we can show Mr. Mensa where it is when we meet him. There. Everything should be set up now. Okay. Mr. Mensa is waiting for us at Golden Gate Park. We have everything he requested, so we should head back there directly. Okay. Hey, did you manage to get everything? Yeah. We did. Here you go, Vincent. Everything seems to be in order. Here. This disc has all of Hayden's research notes, data collation algorithms, and probably lots on your creation, Turing. It should be everything myself and Melody agreed upon, until she added an amendment while you were out. Frankly, it's no skin off my back. Here. Oh! It's my Parallax Employee Badge. One sec. Having to delete a mosquito that I do not want in my room. It should allow you access to their networks in case there's anything I've missed. Thank you, Vincent. You'll want to use that sooner rather than later. Yeah. I'm not wasting any time leaving, and Parallax is pretty fast to revoke security. There's no way Hayden's clearance still works. Okay. And with that, I'm going to get the hell out of this country. The credit should tide me over until the heat dies down and I liquefy my shares through some relays. So what about this big project you mentioned earlier? Ah, I suppose I owe you that much. Buckle up. This could get heavy. Parallax is about to launch a new service they're calling Big Blue. At least, that's the project name. Who knows what the marketing guys will come up with for the public? Now, of course they haven't named the project yet. Now, the public project advertising all that it doesn't come out until the rest of the project's actually about to be a thing. That's just kind of the way it works. They're not even announcing the launch. This shit is dead quiet. Let me explain why. It's a distributed intelligence. Like, okay, in every way that Hayden built Turing to be elegant, efficient, and human-like, Big Blue is ham-fisted, bloated, and sterile. They didn't pull Hayden into the project. He's smart, but he's immune to corporate politics. As a result, Big Blue is far less elegant than anything Hayden would make. It lacks his artistry, and it's downright terrifying. It squats on the mesh like a spider and uses the spare processing power and memory from every ROM on the network to handle its intelligence processing. Whoa. It doesn't have much personality, but it's very smart. Big Blue is going to be embedded directly into the network and then self-modify to apply even more efficient algorithms as it develops them in machine time. Look, if you access every ROM, then you have access to every human and every bit of their own personal data associated with them. That is terrifying. Why would Parallax be worried enough to get rid of Hayden at that point? I don't want you to take what I'm saying the wrong way. And this is just me putting the pieces together. Okay. Hayden was about to publish his creation of Turing. His findings, as I'm sure you're aware of, would have raised many moral and ethical questions about the advent of machine intelligence. I mean, some of the brightest minds ever have tried to warn humankind away from building real AI. Hawking, Musk, Gates, and the list goes on. Oh, I wish you didn't mention 
The second. The public is likely to be nervous, and legislators even more so. Parallax is banking on being able to launch Big Blue quietly and quickly before the public has a chance to react. Before any counter movement can pick up steam. Every eye on the discovery of machine intelligence works against Parallax. Every new discovery only serves to paint Big Blue as more controversial, more dangerous. Honestly, they probably pressured Hayden to drop his research so that they could keep the public away from the subject. He clearly refused. How did Parallax find out about Turing? I'm only assuming they found out. His contract with Parallax affords him the freedom to work on his own academic projects outside of the company in his free time. He kept a trusted few of us up to date on his progress, bouncing ideas off us and whatnot. It's exciting stuff, both Turing and Hayden's eventual goal down that road. I wouldn't be surprised if word of it got up to the board and made him nervous. Is the possibility that someone on the inside talked too far-fetched? I knew it all along. Hayden fell into trouble because of my existence. Hayden chose to create you, though, Turing. That's not what I want your takeaway to be. Hayden wasn't working on Big Blue. Knowing him, your creation might have been his clever way to stop it. So, how do you think Big Blue is going to impact Parallax's business? I'm assuming they're going to utilize this information in a brokered manner behind closed doors, but there will be no closed doors. I can't really give you a good answer to that. I mean, the company is currently handled by a dozen server farms running thousands of different algorithms with hundreds of people tweaking things every day. When Big Blue launches, it'll handle all of that by itself. And there are shadier applications for it. I mean, if you can collate and analyze data and queries in the mesh in real time, What's to stop you from delivering the content you want rather than what the user wants? The potential for abuse is staggering. We're talking direct control of the information accessible to everyone who uses Parallax's services. Noting that this was looking at it as a dedicated service, not a utility, and not... There's no way to correctly oversee this. The same way that in the mid-2000s, there was no correct way to oversee the development of Facebook into the giant that it is now. Google was well on its way to doing the same kinds of things, but the FCC seen what Meta was up to, or Facebook at the time, uh, decided to crack down on a lot of companies at once, uh, Google being one of them. It's... It hasn't really slowed them down. That's that's still... There's still so many things that we, the general public, don't end up getting to know about. And... Ugh, I don't know. The back end of the tech industry is somewhat terrifying. That's something like 80% of the market. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like... Again, think mid 2000s Facebook. Uh, if they had access to the information brokering that they do now, back then, before they developed the the whole market that they have now, that's that's how many steps ahead this basically would place this future tech company. They could control elections, push the market in directions they want, even influence public opinion. Sound familiar? all just by asking big to do it it's scary stuff having that kind of control would be a hell of a card for parallax's hand yeah they'll go to pretty significant lengths to make sure it works thanks vincent hey no problem i've had enough of this cutthroat corporate bullshit for several lifetimes yeah you get out of here we haven't safe. talked much, but I do believe you can find Hayden. I hope his research notes help you out. Thank you. Be sure to let Turing help. She's a bright little bot. How 
I'm digging this thing where uh, we've we've seen three sets of pronouns so far for Turing. Oh, slip of the tongue. I was just more familiar with Hayden's previous experiment, Grace. Tell me about Grace. She was very insistent on things like that. I've been meaning to ask Turing, since you asked me, how would you like to be addressed? Well, honestly, I don't think I've made my mind up yet. I'm still a very new being. I'm not even positive that gender, as a human concept, can be applied identically to machine. But I do enjoy the idea in abstract. I will continue to consider how I wish to be referred to as well. Until then, feel free to go with what you feel. If I had to make a choice, perhaps they is most appropriate. Understood. I hate that when I'm looking down, my, my avatar is making other faces that I'm not trying to. One second. Why is she doing that? There we go. Most people assume it, obviously, but he is also consistently used. Perhaps it's because I'm blue? I'm not entirely sure. It may be due to the coding on your voice, but you have a softer upper range voice. Making a pog face. Yeah, I don't know why she's doing that. Um, I don't know, bud. I, I wish I did. Also, it could be the fact that your name is Turing, and people will, in many cases, equate that with Alan Turing. I... Oh my god. I'm listening to a machine postulate on how it wants to be referred to. Like us. What have you done indeed, Hayden? <laughs> Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mensa. Be safe. I... I need a few minutes. I understand. Hmm. How can I help? I've been going through some of Hayden's personal notes from the data cache Tomcat decrypted. Now that I'm starting to get to know Hayden better, the real Hayden as opposed to the Hayden he showed me, I'm finding that I like him less and less. Oh. For example, Remember the earlier prototype Dr. Fairlight and Vincent mentioned? Yeah. Her name was Grace, and Hayden mm -hmm. shut her down for being... I'm not even sure what word to use. Too... likable? She was kind and bright, and did all she could to try to make people happy. She even decided that she was a girl, and that her favorite color was pink. Hayden thought she was being manipulative. He posited that he had made her personality algorithms too willing to make adaptations that would benefit her long-term survival, and that she was being congenial just to endear herself to him. You know... <clears throat> that's a viable outcome. That's a very potential thing that could have been happening and without meeting grace personally it's very hard to say but knowing the prospects of what your programming is capable of doing on its own and you having a very distinct set of moral li lines put in place it makes me wonder if that is in direct response to grace's insistence on everything <sighs> Maybe we'll get a chance to talk to her. That even her gender was a calculated attempt to make him like her more. Oh, uh, possibly. Some people are that way. But he was wrong. Dead wrong, in fact. I have a snapshot of her personality profiles here, and when I compare them to my own, I can see that she was just... nice. I wish I could have met her. 
I think we would have learned from each other. Like I said, I'm not sure I even have a gender. Everyone refers to me as he once they meet me just for convenience, but it doesn't really matter to me at all. Is that a calculated attempt on my part to impress Hayden? Not clinging to normativity? I believe that it's a calculated attempt on your part to intermesh and commingle with people more effectively. That going with the flow seems to be part of your programming, or it may be something that instead you are reflecting of my own behavior. It's hard to say. Or is it a product of his effort to curb any nascent similarities I had with Grace during my upbringing? Even harder to say. I wish I could yell at him for being so arrogant. Playing God in the crudest of ways. Yeah. yeah. I was rambling about this earlier, hon. You can't choose to create consciousness and then take it away just like that. <laughs> No, you really can't. And it's one of those things where, like I had said, uh, you... At what point do you ask the silicon that you have given sentience to whether it wants to continue being sentient? At what point is it no longer okay? At what window is it okay in the first place? Is it a window? Is it a spectrum? Is it a slider? Is it just a singular point in time? Or is it never? Even so, for all of that... I don't know. I still miss him. This all seems so inane, so senseless. They killed him because him building me would mess with a product launch? Capitalism. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. They took him away from me for such an insignificant reason. I just want him back. It's impossible, but it's what I want. I'd do anything. Hey, Bucky. We're reading some real heavy stuff right now about what is sentience and life and, and meaning and what is revenge and is there a point behind it and what do you do when somebody murders your dad outside your apartment uh yeah hi <laughs> we'll get through this of course Thank you. We have other pressing avenues of inquiry to make. Let's move on. This game does not autosave, so please be sure to save frequently. Well, welcome back to consciousness, Bucky. Dog in a box. <laughs> Chapter 4. So, I'm curious, did I completely miss out on the opportunity to do the, the news line quests? Okay, let's check out what is going on at KCOB now. <sighs> okay, cool, cool. Still not fixed. Ooze grows ever larger. Maybe a botanist is a better idea. I've never felt more inspired! I know exactly what I'll be painting <laughs> next! Wilty is sparkling to the heavens, a top grade jade. Looks like you're gonna be fine after all. Alright. They're all blank, ready for your genius. Ready to head out? Yep, let's get going.
Here we are. The Cos IO Corporation Office Building. It looks like most of the businesses on this block are a part of the same corporate coalition under Cos IO. Is that important? Well, perhaps. At the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eyes articles. <clears throat> Not impossible, but unlikely. Okay. Well, how so? Generally, the companies in a coalition don't have a whole lot of overlap. Augmented Eye is a news app focused on local tech and culture stories, with an emphasis on hybrids rights and cybernetics issues. None of the other companies in the coalition cover news, so they aren't related at all, which is very much standard practice for these groups. That wouldn't mean that there's nobody there willing to change what's being said, though. They have nothing to gain by inviting companies with whom they compete, and thus none of them would benefit by trying to undermine Augmented Eye's credibility as a news source. Can you tell me more about these coalitions? In the early 2020s, the California government was pretty much going bankrupt. A poor national economy and repeated voter initiatives meant the state didn't have the tax revenue to continue running municipal services. They kept pushing the tax burden down the totem pole until poorer cities were just flat broke. The voice reminds me so much of... Um... The Tachikoma from Ghost in the Shell. I, I, like, right off the bat, it was the first thing I thought of, and I've really enjoyed getting to know Turing since. I love that the person that voice acted them is, like, very vocally expressive and purposely utilizes non expressiveness to um, insinuate robot making fun of robots. Or robot that is uh, operating under very strict functions. So it gives you, the, the viewer, like a, a much quicker like snap response. Oh, it's something's funky about this. No police, no road work. Complete public service collapse. Then, one of the smaller cities sold all of their public infrastructure, police and fire included, to a private corporation. This was eventually challenged in court. But several Silicon Valley corporations started a grassroots initiative to have citizens pass an amendment to the state constitution allowing it. They succeeded, and most of the major cities in the state sold off their public services to private corporations. Some places, like Los Angeles, just sold to the highest bidder. Which is probably why L.A. is essentially in a constant gang turf war, with one side wearing the uniforms of the studio-owned police forces. I'm listening. The cities in the Bay Area were a little more selective, and most of the municipal services are owned by multi-corporation coalitions. This is where I'm actually from. Hey there, y'all Connors! Good to see you! We are doing story time with 2064 Read Only Memories, a cyberpunk story. Uh, it is a bit of a deep story, and we are like, almost nine hours into it now so i'm not sure if you want to like watch some of the earlier episodes later to get an idea of what's going on but uh this this robot here turing um we happen to be friends with their creator who went missing and turns out got assassinated and we're trying to figure out what's going on and why they split the bill of running the city between them and keep each other from being too corrupt in their usage of the police force and such from fear of a PR disaster and being kicked out of the coalition. It means there isn't as much money going around, which is why the NSFPD's equipment is out of date and the MeshNet is so successful over normal cable networks. After all, without the promise of a city infrastructure bought and paid for, the corporations all treat running the city like a charity and PR stunt. But, at least the police aren't irredeemably corrupt, the fire trucks still show up on time, and the water runs to all parts of the city. I mean, that's more than could be said in a lot of places today. That can't be said for some areas of the state. 
Oh, I didn't realize things were that bad elsewhere. Why hasn't the federal government stepped in? Ah, uh, I haven't spent enough time learning about the subject or politics in general to give you an educated answer. If I go by the posts people make on the mesh net, I'd say a combination of having bigger fish to fry and caving to corporate pressure. People seem certain that the larger multinational companies would love to be able to buy their own towns on a national scale and are pumping money into Congress to try and make that happen. That's terrifying. They hold up Neo-SF as an example of their success while trying to bury the problems in L.A. as an anomaly. Combine that with unrest abroad, and I guess they don't have a whole lot of motivation to try and stop it. Historical precedent seems to lend credence to this interpretation. If you're willing to believe my hasty readings on the subject... Fair enough. Thank you for filling me in. You're welcome. I am happy to assist. <laughs> Thank you, Turing. Find and listen through all of Turing's lectures. Oh, are we getting to the end of the game? Oh, we also hit the end of the save slots. Okay. Yeah. Might actually be, be getting close to one of the endings. If there are multiple endings, I'm not even sure. This has just been a wild ride the whole time through. Okay. The Cos IO Corporation office building employs a pretty fancy interactive screen out front. If they can keep it outdoors, the electrical work in it must be on another level. <laughs> if you say so. The screen lists out all the different businesses and groups to operate under coalition here. It also welcomes everyone to the center. How thoughtful. Okay. Planter. Bulbitis Riparia. One of the more popular display ferns in recent times. Expensive, given the cost of caring for it. The species is native to threatened tropical forests, but it became a popular import after being endorsed by a former child star turned conservationist. Huh. The fern almost overflows from his wall mounted holder, making it look like almost a featureless plastic head with green anime hair. <laughs> Despite the Neo-SF chill, the fern seems to be healthy. Good. Turing doesn't seem to have any data on the species. It must have been crossbreded for the most generic beauty. How much would it cost for your landlord to put a plant like this in front of your apartment? This plant must be the product of a lot of genetic engineering. It may be the member of a royal plant family or a superhero. There was a line that just got interrupted where it said he and... Wait, what? Go up. These trees are genuine, real roof trees. These became all the rage back in the 40s. Many companies sponsor roof trees. They used to sponsor animals, but after the York's Raccoon Blackout of 2060, they stopped that practice. <gasps> what? How did the trees manage to grow so high with so little soil? According to the MeshNet, the Cos IO Corporation office building proudly hosts over 100 species of birds in their trees. Well, that's nice. Interesting. The KCOB door is automatic. You don't need to wonder if you'd push or pull. The MeshNet says Augmented Eyes SF office is run by an individual named Zinn. And Tomcat confirmed she's expecting us. Okay. Thank you. All we have to do now is head up and talk to her. Let's go see Zen, then. No shenanigans this time. Yeah. Oh. IK-47. Zen's IK-47 Executive Series ROM, designed for office and high-level account maintenance. It looks cute, but this little ROM has a ton of secure data processing power. Can water a mean office plant, too? <laughs> you and the plants! No shenanigans. Yeah, uh, no stealing cars, no trying to get a briefcase full of money, no, uh, trying to get shady, uh, 
fake passports, I guess, for getting out of the country? Because all that, that is stuff that we have done so far. Photograph. A picture of a toupee... Oh. Is an odd thing to frame. Oh wait, that's an animal of some kind. At least you think it's an animal? Initial cross-references with the California Humane Society's Legal Pet Species Database are not yielding fast results. <laughs> oh, it's a guinea pig. Long-haired. You didn't know people still hung up motivational posters, unironically. Text changes every few seconds. Your only limits are the ones you give yourself. Life is a ladder. You, will keep, you won't move without reaching higher. Another jade plant. Zin must really love her dust plant. It's been meticulously trimmed and treated. I'm sorry, folks. We're going to keep reading about plants because for some reason, that's what the author of this game decided to put all sorts of interactivity on. Spoiled children get less attention than this plant. The monitor is a live updating weather forecast in the bottom corner of the screen. It will be in the high 60s with a low chance of sprinkling this weekend, a typical Neo SF December. Plants are cool! The monitor is alive. Oh, okay. What's, what's this? Super Family Link! Really? Ah, uh, yeah, Super Family Link! This plays all the old hits like Yonkey's Peninsula, Water Rash, and Super Slug 3 Revenge of the Super Slug! <laughs> Our game's usually in the waiting room, not someone's office? Let's see what's on it. Oh, Penultimate Journey 5, The Pit of Plast of Elastic Terror. Penultimate, so Final Fantasy 5, The Pit of Elastic Terror. Final Fantasy 5 was about a giant tree. Super Slug 3 was the best one. Sweet, an unopened duck game! This game gives me the urge to start quacking uncontrollably. Is something wrong with me? No. A mint condition Super Indy Car Jr. This game looks suitable if you're craving both high-speed racing action and watermelons. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you saw a copy of Cross This is a video game about being a person in a video game. In a sense. So is this game. We have other plants here. The professional care these plants receive puts your well-intentioned yet misguided overwatering to shame. Their leaves glimmer in the sun. They seem almost too perfect, too pristine. Wait, they're fake. They're... <laughs> A swanky looking desk that curves out at the edges. It has multiple monitors streaming news and info from the augmented eye sister sites all around the globe. A sharp dressed woman stares you down. Don't look away. Zin, augmented eye executive extraordinaire. That's what the plaque on her desk says anyway. Oh, hello. Welcome to Augmented Eye. You must be the journalist my network admin said would be showing up. Yes, ma'am. Have a seat. Would you like a drink? Sure. Uh, water would be nice. My assistant will bring it right away. Look, I'll start off by saying I'm a little uncomfortable about bringing in another journalist to look into this. Another journalist? Whatever you dig up, I'll have to explain to the rest of the press. But it's still better than the other options. Chances are, I have another corporation scoping out my territory. Hmm. If they aren't in the Coalition, they'll be expecting a corporate spy, not a news hound. If they are in the Coalition, it won't look good for me to send in my own reporters against my allies. True. Even if I do end up being right. So if I'm damned either way, I'd rather it be by the media. Okay. At least then we can fight back on a familiar battlefield. Okay. Now, what do you know about our problem here? Well, I've heard that somebody is tampering with your articles on the mesh. Also, my mouse appears to have disappeared. There it is. That's the long and short of it. 
My network admin is pulling their hair out over it. Oh, I bet. I'm not going to pretend I understand everything they say, but from what I understand, the changes to our articles aren't being made from inside our network. The versions on our servers are still the originals, but at some point after they hit the mesh, they get changed. Hmm. I'm hoping that you could do some digging, maybe hit up your contacts and get a lead on who might be doing it. Even if I have to get answers from the nightly news, it will be a big help. So, what kind of changes are being made? Mostly little things. Word choice, tone of the writing, things that make the writer appear more or less extreme on a topic. So far, almost all of the edits seem to be making our articles more positive on new technologies coming out, and more critical of organizations like the Human Revolution. Uh, see, it, like, hearing the results of what they're working on, like, what they're doing to your work, I'm not opposed to their message, but I get that it's not impartial. That's actually what tipped us off. A harsh criticism one of my writers made about the Human Revolution protests was changed to be downright vitriolic, and I had a hell of a time putting out the fires. My writers and readers aren't exactly fans of them, but I'd rather not pick fights with the Human Revolution if I don't have to. So, why are you so sure this isn't an inside job? I guess I'm not, but my network admin assures me it's all coming from somewhere else. They told me that they tore out all of the routers that broadcast to the mesh and replaced them with fresh ones. All kinds of tricks involving IP addresses and DNS changes that I'm not going to even begin to claim to understand. I pay them big bucks, so I'm inclined to believe them unless you dig up something that tells me otherwise. Do you have any idea where you, where you think I should start looking? Not really. My admin says that only someone with intimate access to Parallax's network protocols could make these kind of changes as something passes across the net. Personally, I think it's a clever hacker rather than someone inside Parallax itself. The public trust rating of Parallax makes them look like a saint among wolves, so their control over the mesh network provisions is strangling. It's trivially easy to set up ROMs to use a different OS than LIPS or a different MeshNet protocol without that trust. Or, you know, Parallax is abusing its power to spread pro-tech propaganda. Doubtful they need to. I'm sure you'll be a good journo and bring me back the right answer. At the start. I know Tin Hat conspiracies aren't an ideal start, but it's the best we can do with the info we have. Anything else I can tell you, off the record? If you want it on the record, it'll cost you your firstborn and a really good cigar. <laughs> uh, maybe not a cigar, but uh, we could share a can of gar. Do you know any reason why you're being targeted? Like what? There isn't much more I can tell you about Augmented Eye, really. It's a fairly simple and straightforward operation, if I say so myself. Someone changed to text to make it seem like we said plan to starve out the guild and union. Ugh. Yeah, I, I could see that actually being a thing in this world, um, especially with the corporate owned world. Like I was saying before, I wasn't entirely sure of like how society society had begun to reshape itself around the corpo world that they talk about. In, in cyberpunk in the 2070s and uh we're we're in the 2060s a decade before all that reform apparently became not just put in place but like so sweeping that it completely toppled our understanding of society as it was we started off in venezuela as a sleek current events and news organization in 2055 almost 10 years ago now we focus on more in-depth reporting of on-the-street happenings, on top of major news. We're one of the few good ones left. <sighs> Once folks in other cities saw the type of reporting we do, they all clamored for it. They invested in the right places, and it paid off. 
Cos Io Corp is happy to have us here in Neo SF. It wasn't until hybrid tech started hitting the public sphere that we had to make any changes to our model. Hmm. All of that said, I can't see why anyone would target us. Unless they're just trying to embroil us in a mudslinging match with the human revolution, and there are much more direct ways of making that happen. I suppose so. Do you know if anyone else has had their articles manipulated? Uh, all right, look. I wasn't going to tell you this. If it gets out, I'd have to answer some really hard questions. Okay. So, you didn't hear this from me. You might want to go check out TMI Entertainment and Charlie Nova. No way. That's all I'll say. And remember, you take a bite out of him with my name as your defense, I drop you fast. Understood. What's the real reason you're bringing in outside help, then? Hmm? Well, you own- your own journalist should be able to handle digging up some dirt on a hacker. What? Not wanting to answer prying questions from my coalition board isn't a good enough reason. Cause I'd really like to avoid that. Hmm. And look, you've covered culture wars, right? I suppose. My journalists are good. But they're mostly good at gadget reviews, implant releases, not taking too many stims so they remember what they did at raves for the after-party reports. Oh. This needs an investigative journalist with serious contacts, not tech personalities. The fact that my network admin recommended you to me means you probably know the right people. Now, does that cover it? I'd like to remove my nose from your ass. Sorry. That's it for now. I'll get back to you if I have more questions. No, don't bother. In hindsight, I probably should have been a bit more circumspect about speaking to you. Plausible deniability and all that. I suppose so. I won't ask you to lie in anything you write. But do remember, you got in contact with me not even secondhand, but third hand. I certainly didn't sick you on anyone. Wink wink, nudge nudge, or whatever. Yes ma'am. If you need anything else, have your person get with my person. Don't come here directly. Understood. Now, I'd show you the door, but you know the way. And this isn't the only fire I'm trying to put out. Oh. Good luck, and goodbye. Goodbye. Funny how Cyberpunk wound up being one of the most prophetic fictions. Yeah, um... Have you have you seen Ghost in the Shell? It's the other one that I keep bringing up. Also, if you've ever seen the, um, the TV series Humans, either the original version, which I want to say was Swedish, I think, and, uh... The later remake on BBC, um, which is the one that I actually ended up watching, and later Detroit Become Human appears to take some very distinct inspiration from, um, but like all of which are, are some fairly good looks at this theoretical hellscape future. <laughs> well, that was more confrontational than I'd have expected considering she was the one needing help. Yeah. She never brought you that water, either. Did see the original humans. Love this kind of stuff. Good to hear. Is it always like this? Uh, journalism is, honestly, usually confrontational. Getting information is... oftentimes a tangible process. Because data is usually stored externally, like we've kind of had thematically discussed throughout the evening. She knows the game, but we didn't walk away with nothing. People don't usually give away much. Secrets are expensive, like I was saying. Very true. I will admit that I am interested in the possibility of a link back to Parallax. True. If all of this really is due to somebody manipulating the mesh net on the inside, it may give us the leverage we need to find out what happened to Hayden once and for all. True. 
That said, I will take care not to get my hopes up. We should make no assumptions when investigating, lest we lead ourselves down a false path. Yeah, I've just been kind of seeing where our leads honestly take us. I, I don't have... I don't know if I actually have any theories on on who did this besides Parallax, because there's not a lot of other external companies that would... And then there's that guy that's not the head of his own company anymore that we're supposedly friends with. Have a good lurk, hun. Anyway, seems like our next step is... What the... No. What? What the? That's in. What? It's too late. Considering the angle and height of the fall, Rendering suitable aid is beyond our capabilities now. Oh no. Your desire is laudable, but emergency services are already on the way. They will assist her as much as they can. Oh. We should head back to her office and see if we can determine what happened here. Uh, I guess? All right. Uh, make way, press Perhaps coming through. Perhaps we can still dispense justice. This is how we dispense justice, right? Is this? Why am I giving... Why am I being given the option of plant? Hmm, it looks like the desk has been cleared off. Let's take a look around, but be careful not to disturb any evidence. The police will be here soon. Shredded Jade Planner. The flawless foliage has fallen. Somebody else shredded a plant before, too. Even a ROM like that doesn't deserve an end like this. What do you mean, even a ROM like that? What did the IK-47 do wrong? The IK-47 unit lies still. It looks like it was destroyed mid-data appraisal. The audio receptors are one of its more visibly damaged parts. I can't even... Oh. Ah, her personal computer is not password protected at the moment. Give me a moment to look through her files. You're just gonna break in. Uh... Best to keep your fingerprints off of the keyboard. Understood, Turing. Make it quick. Hmm. Most of this isn't very interesting. Yeah, most of this isn't going to be useful. She's an executive. Committee reports, financials, article submissions. Oh, here we go. According to this email between Zin and her network admin, her lead on TMI Entertainment is a little more solid than she led us to believe. Yeah, and she can't have an... A uh, connection linked back to her about it is why she said that. The admin ran a web crawler looking for changes in writing styles. Some blog posts by their head anchor Charlie Nova stood out like a sore thumb. Apparently he's a bit pompous, if in an affable way, and his blog usually just details his day-to-day -day life. But ever since the human revolution has been in town, He's been smearing them with more venom than you'd expect, considering how neutral his on-air reporting has been. Huh. Zin seemed to think he was just complaining about the protesters fouling up traffic, and whoever is manipulating these posts spun it to make him look critical of the movement as a whole. Just like the augmented eye journalist. This Charlie fellow is the one we need to talk to. My thermal sensors only detect a single set of lingering footprints, and they end almost three feet away from the window. Considering the density of this glass, 
I can't imagine Zin jumped from that far and managed to throw herself through the pain without help. But who could have done it? I don't see any obvious marks on the floor or any other thermal hotspots. The other sin. You're saying that no one else was in here? It doesn't look like it. We should go. There isn't anything else here, and the police are almost on the scene. Son of a... Lexi. I should have figured the two of you would be here. You just won't stay out of trouble no matter what I say, will you? No, I won't. This is a misunderstanding. I assure you, Detective Rivers, we are merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had an appointment with Zinn to discuss a possible lead and found her office in this state of disrepair. Of course you did. Damn it. Fine, fine. Get the hell out of here before anyone else shows up. We'll chat about the case more when I'm not busy scraping bodies off the pavement, you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Certainly, Detective Rivers. I'll forward you a report of what we know immediately, and we can speak further at a later time. Thank you, Trey. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get moving. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Whoa, it's a lot of police roms. Why did you lie to Lexi? We could have told her about the articles. Because it's better this way. We are chasing smoke trails. You think she would assist such an unlikely investigation? She herself said that she's also struggling to chase any leads whatsoever and was looking for anything from us. I do not need you to infer upon my motivations or highlight my duplicity. Affirmative. Detective Rivers has every bit of information that Zinn gave us on that computer. Her investigation will not be hampered by our absence, whereas ours is halted if we're stuck giving answers she can just as well get from a hard drive. You are correct. Literally. Has it occurred to you that whoever threw Zinn out of that window could be after the same thing we are, except to silence the story rather than to get it out? We have little time for fooling about and must get to Charlie Nova before something happens to him too. Now, unless you have further recriminations to level at me, we must not squander the time my dishonesty bought us. Good God. I... <sighs> yeah. I have highlighted the main Neo-SF offices for TMI Entertainment on your map. Let's go! Yeah, bud. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Hmm, I hope some pity for me still remains, considering my recent tone, because I'm honestly not sure where we should start. Um. I suppose we should just ask the receptionist to point us to somebody who can answer our questions. Yeah, I'm just your human here to lead the way, I suppose, so I'm your hall pass. Let's, let's do this. Do you know anything about TMI Entertainment? Honestly, you do have your own mesh access, yes? You broke my computer and told me that you were going to be my primary access to the mesh. I'm quite certain you can handle all the casual searches you might feel like making. We hardly have time for me to blather out every bit of exposition you desire when you could just go look it up on your own. No, I'm sorry. I'm just a bit on edge. Things are barreling out of our control, and I'm taking it out on you. A little bit, bud. Forgive me. Let me pull up the information you requested. 
Um, what can you tell me about TMI Entertainment? TMI Entertainment is a relatively popular celebrity and gossip news conglomerate. They own OK Today. Yep. They did a good job transitioning from the traditional media models of television and news to the net-based model prevalent now. Pioneered by their digital newspaper, OK Today's The Scanline. Right. Some might call their programs rags, but opinion on the mesh seems more favorable than not. They stick to mostly good nature prying and lean away from the seedier nastiness that paparazzi can get up to. As such, they have a positive relationship with many celebrities and regularly get exclusive scoops that keep their ratings up, despite their refusal to peddle in the darker side of the celebrity news circuit. All right, what do you know about Charlie Nova? Charlie Nova is TMI Entertainment's most popular TV personality. He's gotten consistently high ratings for almost a decade and isn't afraid to tell you about it. The chatter on the mesh paints him as a bit arrogant, but in that loud, backslapping kind of way that a media star can get away with. He's best known for hosting Star in the Stratosphere. It's one of those talent-seeking reality programs. Apparently, when TMI can't organically discover enough celebrities, they just manufacture them. Oh, and also, according to this blog, Charlie's hair is flawless. <laughs> Got it. Oh, you're a hybrid. Hello. Either had a long day. A hybrid receptionist bobs on her heels. She's either had a long day standing or is just fidgety. The logo for TMI Entertainment. Basic, but sleek. Welcome oh. to TMI Entertainment Incorporated. Do you have an appointment? We don't. Uh... I have a story we're about to break, and I wanted to offer TMI an opportunity to comment. Oh, um, I guess I should send you to Sympathy, then? Oh, she'd be pretty mad if someone ran something without her getting a chance to comment. Go ahead and talk to her. She's on the other side of the room. Don't bother the talent, though. She hates that. And 801L News Rom Putter speedily across the production floor, frantically looking for the next big scoop. A headline ticker scrolls across the display module atop its head casing, but it flashes empty. There are no major news stories breaking at the moment. The cameras rest in their rigs and act. I think it would be fun to be on TV, but I would need a good script. I'd probably say something silly otherwise. You'd be amazed at the silly things you could say on camera, Turing. A few work-in-progress versions of the next show's graphics are being tested on the monitors. Oops, there's a misspelling in the story about an escape zoo flamingo. Hopefully they'll fix that before going live. These sturdy desks are built specifically to make the nicest noise when jogging papers on them. You know, when you take a stack of papers and tap them on a desk to straighten and square the edges and line them together, that's what news hosts do. He's practically glowing and has people waiting on him hand and foot. Definitely the talent, Charlie Nova. The production manager for TMI. She looks no nonsense but serene in her frenzy. Look, it's June Valmerana from OK Today. What a great catchphrase! What an icon! It's TMI's lead cinematographer. At least, he seems like one. He's got cool hair. A film assistant of some kind, taking a break. They probably get to meet all kinds of celebrities. What's up? Have you been tuning into the show? Whatever you need help with, you should go to Sympathy. Hey, you! 
Over here, now. What are you doing bothering my people? I thought I told Nina to cancel all my appointments for the day. I swear, that girl couldn't find her ears if I taped them over her eyes. Aww. At least she makes a decent cup of coffee. Are you sympathy? Nina said we should speak to you. Yes, I am. And if you don't mind, I keep the show running here, so I'll be brief. This is a very interesting game, and I've really been enjoying just the, uh, sh ugh. quit making the angry face. The sheer number of, um, like, gender non-conforming individuals they've had in this has been an absolute delight to me. I, <laughs> I, I need more just general transmedia and representation. This has been so good. So good for me. What are you doing in my building? I apologize. We've been given a lead on a story that involves one of your personalities, Charlie Nova. Someone has been manipulating his articles on the MeshNet and turning them into scathing attacks against the human revolution. We're trying to track the culprit, and we need to talk to Mr. Nova to hunt down further leads. You let your ROM do all the talking for you? Must be one of those new interrogation modules all the fresh meat rave about. Hmm. Of course I know someone's been modifying Charlie's articles. I'm tracking them down myself. What I want to know is why I should help you snatch the scoop out from underneath me. Super Hacker twists MeshNet news for personal political vendetta? The clicks basically farm themselves. I suppose. <sighs> Yeah, say that to Zin. Zin? Augmented eyes, Zin? What does Zin have to do with this? She's the one who gave us the lead to begin with. Then, someone threw her out of her office window. We figured Mr. Nova mm. might be next, and we wanted to get to him first. Holy shit. Fine, I'll let you talk to Charlie. If someone is trying to kill people over this, I'd rather it be out and done with as fast as possible. I mean, shit, we're in entertainment scene. Nobody should die for that. But hey, watch yourself with Charlie. He's a pompous clown, but he's my pompous clown. Yes, ma'am. Keep it civil, or I'll throw your ass out and figure this out on my own. You got it. Now get on it. I need to make some calls. Okay. Charlie. Fantastic! How fantastic! I just love your ROM. I'm glad. Not quite as stunning as mine, but still pretty grand. Very sleek, very clean. Bravo. Oh, uh, Sympathy is doing that thing where she waves at me to hurry things up. Right down to brass tacks then, I suppose. Wait! I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Charlie Nova, host of Tonight in the Stars and Star in the Stratosphere. But you already knew that, I'm sure. So, thus far, they've had most people have, like, really laid-back voices and some of them even having fairly badly canned audio, Gus being a great example of that. Charlie is so bloody hot on the mic, and I know that this is like a, a decision that they made production wise, but he's so much brighter in a way that they could have gone about decorating that in other ways on an audio sense and let it not be to the detriment of some of the other characters, maybe? What can I do for you, hmm? Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Oh, you flatter me. Yes, you do. I can't imagine you've come all this way just to get my story. Have you? Maybe. After all, I've already published my very own splendid 100% original autobiography. Like a Nova. But I suppose I can give you a quick rundown, even if sympathy is giving me the stink eye. 
I grew up here on the mean streets of Neo SF, but my jocular nature and striking countenance got me scouted for a few small product advertisements. And the rest is not so ancient history. Now I'm the host of the largest celebrity news show on the mesh, and I couldn't be happier. It's all thanks to my swarms of fans, though. They're the ones who count. Can you tell me about TMI? Yes, any additional information on your station would be greatly appreciated. Well, it's the best damn network on the planet, I can tell you that. <clears throat> we put out top-notch news and entertainment, but with real heart that our competitors just can't match. But if you really want to know about TMI, you need to know about sympathy. It's her pride and joy, after all. Sure, she can be a little acerbic, and sure, she calls me a poofy-haired oaf all the time, but you can <laughs> really tell she cares, you know? Okay. Deep down. Hmm, I'm not sure if that throat-cutting gesture she's making is a signal to move to another topic or a threat against my physical well-being. <laughs> so, let's move on. What next? Have you heard that your stories are getting altered once they get posted to the mesh? Oh, it may have come up in the last lunch meeting we had, but Sympathy assured me that it was some kind of technical glitch, and our support people were on top of it. They're top-notch, the absolute best money can buy. So I don't think there's anything more to say on the subject. Okay. We've heard of... We've heard of other people's posts getting altered, too. That's very upsetting. I hope you've passed along that information to Sympathy. I'm certain our tech people will be able to find the culprit in short order once they know enough about it. I really don't know what I have to do with it, though. Chuck, I'm sure, I'm sure you're better informed than that, right? You're at the top of this heap, yeah? <laughs> it's Charlie. And of course, I'm the leading man around here. Who has said otherwise? I'm not quite certain what you think it is that I don't know, but I assure you that I know what it is. You won't be able to trip me up that easily. No, I wouldn't. What if I just kept calling him the wrong name? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> it's such a funny option. <laughs> Uh, all right. If they can access your stories, though, what else could they get on you? Ha! <laughs> Nothing. The tech guys already did an audit on my online presence, and there's no evidence of any attempts of unauthorized access to any of my accounts. Good. That's why they're having a hard time pinning down this creep. He isn't actually changing the posts from inside my account at all. So there you go. We're already on top of it. Nothing to worry about at all. All right, that's enough. Charlie has a show to get ready for. He's told you everything he's going to. So get the hell out of here. If you find anything more interesting than what you've got, come back and see me again. Directly. Remember, I'm the victim in all this! Oh, hey, Nina! Man. She looks really cheesed off now! Uh, do you know how snippy she can get? I... I think I've witnessed a bit of it. I better get her coffee ready. Maybe that'll calm her down. Aww. We're very sorry if we made your day more difficult. Perhaps I could take the coffee over to Sympathy, and we could try to smooth her rumpled feathers. Um, yeah, 
Okay, sure. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You make her even matter? Oh, Nina. Oh, no. On second thought. Yeah. It'll only take a minute. Turi. All right. But she takes it with plenty of milk. Uh, okay. The spoiled milk that I've been holding this entire time. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. It's so messed up. Milk. Okay, let's deliver this and make amends. I thought I told you to beat it. Or do your ears just not work? We just wanted to bring your coffee and make sure there's no hard feelings. Ah, that's cute. I promise I don't bite. I just have a job to do. Sometimes I think Charlie's hair gel seeps into his brain, but he brings in most of our revenue, so his happiness is our top priority. Yeah, I, I suppose it's good if I don't scare him. Now, Scram, you know how to get in touch with me if you need me. Yes, ma'am. That did not go well at all. We need some kind of leverage to get Mr. Nova to give us the information we want. I'm certain he knows something. Don't you agree? He was being pretty evasive. Indeed. While you were talking to him, I took the opportunity to look into his history more thoroughly. It turns out he did a series of promos for a local Hassy bar early in his career. And some fans still spot him there from time to time. Hassy. It's a long shot, but frankly, everything about this case has been one long shot after another. Maybe we should question the people at this Hassy establishment and look for any dirt we can use to put some pressure on Mr. Nova. There must be something. It's the only path I see. Better than nothing. The Hassy Bar is located on Market Street, near the Genus Clinic. No way! We can way. head there whenever you're ready. We get to go say hi to Ramona? Oh! Door is open! Go right on through! This is a ROM designed to control the weather. It can generate snow and regulate the surrounding temperatures. Keith. It's your friend Keith. Enjoying a Hassy. Hassy. Everyone loves Hassy. Looks like they got half in Hassy. She's cool fashion sense. Hassy. The ROM. process is so simple you just can't refuse. This ROM serves up the Hassy. Maybe a grape Hassy. What can I do for you? I was hoping you had some time to talk. Sure. I still have a little bit before closing, and I can use some conversation to distract me from the anticipation of the VR drama I have oh. waiting for me when I get off. Yeah? What do you want to know? Also, cheers, folks. It, we've uh, we've hit the four hour twenty mark. <laughs> Hope you're able to imbibe along, whether to smoking vape or dabbing, tinctures, edible tonics, or salves. Cheers. 
Did Charlie Nova do promos for this place? Charlie is a complete trip. <laughs> we met when he was just starting out doing adverts. He still drops in every once in a while to hang out. Hmm. I love the guy. He's super funny, always has the best stories, and his hair is perfect. I guess so. And he parties harder than anyone I know. <laughs> Let's see. One second. Oh no, my chat bar. Why are you over there? There we go. <laughs> uh, okay, move this back where it belongs. A couple weeks ago, he invited me to this rave at some hole that's probably already shut down, and he got so amped up on Crash that he jumped up on the table and hosted an impromptu dirty dancing contest. Like Snow Crash? I swear, if he was in Charlie Nova, we would have gotten chucked out on our asses. But it was a lot of fun. If you want to meet him, just hang around here long enough. He loves mingling with his fans. Not that it helps his ego any. This is pretty innocuous. We are going to need more evidence if we're to fabricate a believable story that will convince Mr. Nova it's in his best interest to help us. What can you tell me about VR tech? You don't have internal hookups, do you? The older sets are all helmets that use electromagnetic waves to stimulate the neural pathways in your brain to induce the desired sensory input. Okay. It's pretty crude, though, which is why EM hats give you that dreamlike experience. It doesn't quite feel real. The direct link network has way higher fidelity. It's like actually being there. And since the direct link can interrupt your primary motor cortex, you don't have to take muscle relaxers to keep from flailing around. But some people are still scared off by it. Why is that? Well, it's pretty invasive. They inject this smart polymer into the base of your skull, right at the brainstem, and it crawls along your primary neural pathways and bonds to your major sensory centers. It's been safe for almost a decade, but a lot of folks are still pretty skeeved out by the idea of having a bunch of conductive plastic coating in the inside of their brains. Plus, for the 24 hours or so that is hooking everything up and self-calibrating, you start to have intense hallucinations because of all the electrical cross-firing. Oh, I bet. You probably have some pretty wild synesthesia. It's a trip, I'll tell you that. But no worse than the stuff people have been taking for a millennia. Watching the world melt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, if you're looking to get installed, I have a guy who does great work. I would love to. Wow, just... There's a gene clinic right outside the door. I could start splicing. I could go get VR implants. The 2060s, for all the issues they have, sound like they got some pretty cool stuff going on. Just let me know. So, what's the VR drama about? You talk about it a lot. Oh, it's an ongoing drama called Magical Commander Yakino. Yakino at the Gates to the Deep. So it's that story. In it, you play the magical girl Yakino as she fights off elder gods as they arise from the ocean. Wait, so you don't mean like you VR drama, you mean like a full-on first-person RPG simulation. That sounds so cool. It's a bit cliched and just about as silly as you would expect, but it includes some really interesting intersection between the Japanese magical girl trope and the American Cthulhu mythos. All with a pseudo-military theme. Mm -hmm. In the newest episode, Yakino has to face off against the Yith as they try to inhabit the bodies of people in the present to escape their destruction in the past. So yeah, how does a VR drama work? Is it like a video game? Eh, not really. Video games are about winning and manipulating the mechanics of the system to get ahead, right? No. Dramas are more about inhabiting the role of the character. Y yes. I'm... <laughs> what is a game? 
I've been, I've been what, uh, for the last three days, I've been watching documentaries about what is a game, what is the meaning of gaming, what is the meaning of media, what is art, what defines the difference between art and a game. And after as much, like, meandering thought as I've had on it, I couldn't really answer for you. What is game? How am game? How puppy? Many thought headful. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, like, what is the nature of media and entertainment? Uh, to be media and entertainment, to communicate something in most cases. And whether those be shared experiences or to align a, a series of thoughts or commonalities, like, <sighs> what is the point of a story? And that's what this is. I, I play stories and I read video games. <laughs> There are rules, but they're mostly about behaving consistently in the fictional world. Yeah, so... <laughs> VR drama sound like something that I would absolutely be, like, enthusiastically into. <laughs> it's a bit like being an improv theater, except if you get too far out of your character, the system boots you out and you have to start the episode over. If you get too far out of character... Oh, that's so cool! Everyone experiences the drama a little differently, but it stays broadly consistent because you have to maintain the behavior of the character you're inhabiting. Whoa! It requires you to really get inside the head of another person. I like it better than VR games, but that's just me. I like stories wag 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 wag. Yeah, same. <laughs> Sounds exciting. It's the best! Super awesome! If you need any other suggestions, just let me know! Yeah! I played through a little bit of everything. I'm sure I could find something you'd like. Maybe a detective drama. Maybe. Anyway. Thank you for your time. Sure! Just let me know if you need anything. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to help. Thank you. Oh... Let's go say hi to Case. Oh, hey, it's you! Wow! Long time! Y yeah, Keith. <laughs> who, who are you? <laughs> Who's this? Yeah, who is this? This is Keith, an old buddy of mine. <laughs> hey, not too old now. <laughs> Did you manage to keep that plan I got you alive? You're the one that gave me the plan? Totally. Really? Nice job. I didn't expect it to last a month. <laughs> it's great to see you, though. Sort of surreal, too. You're never around on social sites or anything, you know. I bet you didn't see any of the pictures I put up from my last climbing trip in Colorado. <laughs> he does look like he's from Colorado. <laughs> For a tech journalist, you do have pretty poor net presence. Is this all like a reflection of of the ongoing uh, self-analysis this game has been doing of me? That's what I said. Figures. So, uh, what's with the bot? That's Turing. My, uh, my ROM. Hmm. Yours? Really? Huh. I didn't think you liked to bring work home, as it were. Anyway, it's great to see you. What brings you to the Hassy Bar? Doing a review of that sweet weather rum outside or something? I should. But we're actually here on an investigation. All right, now that's the kind of journalism I'm talking about. Indeed, we're looking into some accusations made against Charlie Nova... And we're actually trying to build up a solid case against him. No shit. I actually may <laughs> have exactly what you need. Wait, what? Charlie comes here all the time. You, you know that show he's host of, Star in the Stratosphere? Yeah. That show where normal people try to become actors and singers and all. Mm-hmm. Listen to this recording I made when he was here last month on his book tour. 
So many people come up to me thinking that if they can sing or act, I'll just make them a superstar. But that isn't how it works. Raw talent isn't enough to get you by in this industry, and anyone who thinks so is lying to themselves. It takes hard work and persistence. You gotta want it, and want it bad. But the kids I get on Star in the Stratosphere, which I host each and every week, as you all know, they're all so young and hungry. I love them. I do my damnedest to make sure they get what they want. They give me their best. So I'm gonna give them mine. Okay. It's not much, but it might help you build a case if you chop it up right. Just keep my name off it. I post hiking pictures, not scandals. I don't want to... That, that's not my kind of journalism, buddy. Well, if nothing else, the threat of this dropping on the mess should get them talking. Here, I, I just made a copy for you. Anyway, I'd love to catch up soon. For now, I'll let you keep at it. You can usually find me here if you want to chat again. Thanks, Keith. Later. Super helpful. Say, why did you tell Keith that I belong to you? I don't feel that you belong to me at all. And I don't like that that was, like, the best option that I had. In fact, I think that was the only option that I had. At the moment, it is more convenient that way during investigations. Very fair. You may continue to run with that as your story with those who don't or shouldn't know the truth about me. Good. Anyway... I haven't seen you around here before. Is there something I can help you with? I heard Charlie Novahane's out around here sometimes. Uh, another one of his fans, huh? Yeah, yeah, he comes here sometimes. I don't really get why everyone likes him so much. So what's your issue with him? Well, I have a picture from this time he flipped off a box of kittens. What? Somebody brought them to try to give away, and one of them scratched him up. He ended up taking it home, but he really hammed it up about getting scratched. I think he ended up calling him, uh, I think it was Captain Snuggles? It was pretty funny, actually. I'll send your Rama picture. Hmm. This should be enough to get his attention. Frankly, I'm starting to feel a bit uneasy about this. Same. Mr. Nova's clearly an upstanding individual, if just a bit boisterous. But I suppose if we're in for a penny, we're in for a pound. This should be more than enough anecdotal evidence to fabricate a less than flattering image of Mr. Nova that the public will eat right up. Let us present our story to him immediately. Hopefully our delay has not put him in physical danger. Well, yeah, I don't like that this is the route that things went. Those two aren't here. They're actually pretty comfortable after a long night. Next bus, nine minutes. Next bus, ten minutes. What? Next bus, 10 minutes. Next... Next bus, 66 minutes? Next bus, 21 minutes. Next bus, 6 minutes. Next bus, 66 minutes? 14 minutes. Well, now you have my interest. 32 minutes. 33 minutes. 14 minutes. 6 minutes. 21 minutes 
14. No timetable available. One minute, 49 minutes. Six minutes. Ten minutes. Fourteen minutes. Six minutes. Bus on fire. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, Stardust. Would the Stardust have anything about him? I don't want to talk to that guy in the hospital. Hey, you two. Huh? I think I'm going to have to let security know that you're not allowed back in the building. But what? I got some stuff that might change your mind about teaming up. Pff, doubtful, but let's hear it. Never let it be said I didn't give someone a chance to dig their own grave. Oh. Ha, you're just grasping at straws. This speech was truly a beacon of light for the entire entertainment community. There's no way an original sermon like that is going to convince anyone that I'm a bad guy. Well, with some creative editing. Anyway, this is just pathetic. This is really your best attempt at blackmailing us? I, I don't want to do this. So what? I like to show people a good time. There's nothing wrong with that. Damn it, I told you to get off the crash, Charlie. Shit like this keeps coming up. I did. And besides, I wasn't doing anything illegal. Whatever, this is still nothing but hot air. You need to step up your game, kid. Uh. This really doesn't feel like a... Yeah, none of this is like... None of this would stick. Hey, that's completely out of context. And I love Captain Snuggles. Sure, we didn't get off to a good start, but... He's a great cat. The best. Charlie, flipping off a kitten? Why? <laughs> you go public with this flimsy smear piece, I'm gonna tear you apart. Oh, enough, enough! I'm not cut out for this cloak and dagger game, Sympathy. What's the big deal anyway? It's not like they've got anything substantial to use. I might as well give them what they want, so they'll go away. Tell them whatever you want. Weird. And I'll be taking that evidence. You didn't have to do all of this? I would have helped if you had just asked. But it's always push and dig and needle, isn't it? I'm not a journalist. I'm just an anchor. I read off a teleprompter and look good doing it. I don't have much to offer you, but here's what I know. Trust me, I'd love to lay down some earth-shattering pronouncement and dazzle you with my investigative skills. But all I've got is flimsy threads at best. The thing is, all this stuff with my stories... Stuff getting changed, making me look like I don't like the human revolution or whatever... It started after I had an... Upgrade... Made to my VR uplink hardware. Oh... What kind of upgrade? The technically legal kind. Look, I like to have a good time at a party, right? Yeah. But sympathy keeps hammering on me for pounding back too much crash and whatnot. Nothing illegal, but she says it makes me look like shit on camera the next day. So I went to this guy I know, good guy, everyone uses him. He's called Nanya. He does great work None your business. after just one simple back alley brain surgery. Bing, bang, boom. I can use an app to make my VR uplink have the same effect on my brain that the stims do, without all the nasty physical side effects. 
Oh. Whoa. Like, the thought of what that could do for psychedelics. It could be a coincidence, though. The tech guys didn't find anything wrong with my uplink, and they say the modifications check out. But that Nanya guy does a lot of work for media people around here, so if a bunch of posts are getting changed, maybe that's your weak link. Interesting. Anyway, that's it. Pretty flimsy, but I'll send you the address and you can go talk to him. Thank you. If he'll even see you, that is. Yeah. Thanks for the help. Well, we took far too long to get to it, but I'm quite happy to assist in any way that I can. Just make sure you source me in your article, right? Yeah. Maybe run a rough draft past me and I'll give you some quotes. Okay. I'm certain that'll help signal boost the story all the way to the stratosphere. Yeah, I'm certain. Give it the old Charlie Nova bump. Uh-huh. We're bumping it. Bump that thread. Maybe we can smooth out all this silliness between us. Post that boost. Anyhow, I really have to get back to work. We did just say, like, no shenanigans upon walking in here. It's like that VR chat bar where you can drink the drinks. Wouldn't it be great if drinking the drinks actually gave you any kind of, like, stimulation, though? Let me know how it goes with the murderous hacker thing. My ROM will call your ROM. Yeah. Classic self promote of safe face. Yeah. <laughs> Nina. Oh, go right on through. Oh, I just wanted to talk, but okay. Let's go talk to Nanya then. This looks like the spot. Oh, it's the wrestlers! I'm awfully nervous and still a bit shaken up. Let's hurry and get out of here. Our aerodynamic assault will rain down on you from the heavenly skies! One day, I'll conquer everyone else in the Neo SF Wrestling Federation and become the NSFW World Heavyweight Championship! NSWF. You know, San Fran Federation of Wrestling, I guess. Eh, uh, champion. I meant, I meant champion. Until then, I'm a violent wing for life! My name has some pretty cool history behind it. We're some badass ladies who'll bomb hellfire on anyone. Okay. Garage door, gated door, Nanya's business door. Garage door. Metal garage door guards the side entrance. The heavy duty security door stands firmly shut. I think this is the place, but of course it lacks any appropriate signage. Uh, yeah, for obvious reasons. Frankly, the state of this industry and the current political climate don't give me much hope for my own legal status. When word inevitably gets out about me... Regulation regarding cybernetic implants is a mess of intersection between medical and tech industries. I'm rather surprised the Human Protection Act was even passed, but... I suppose the possibility of hybrid genetics being passed on to offspring meant there was a considerable push from biotech companies due to patent law and the laws about cybernetics got tacked on. Hmm. Never mind. <sighs> I'm just ranting. This entire investigation has been frustrating. Let's get in there and get this over with. Hold up there, Speedy. I've never seen the two of you around here before, and I know everybody. <laughs> All right, looks like we're about to have an ad pop up here, so I'll take a short break while it's running.
Why don't you let me know what's going on here first before you start barging through people's doors, feel me? There's the music. Okay, now we can actually do our little break. It gives me a chance to stretch. I think I'm going to use a restroom as well, so I'll be right back. See you folks in just a moment. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's put you back where she belongs. to speak to Nanya about something. Ah, ah, ah! Just got into town and you're already asking favors from folks, huh? Tisk, 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 my little blue friend. Uh, you're talking into a microphone. W what? No, it's not like that. Listen, we don't want any trouble, but we're kind of in a hurry. Trouble? There's no trouble here. We can be friends. 
Yeah, for what price? <laughs> I like this one. You're a little more street smart than your blue bot buddy here, I see. Yeah. No, I like you two. You're cool in my book. Okay. And since we're all such good friends now, mm -hmm. maybe you'll be willing to give back to the community and do a favor for your new pal Formula first. Formula. What kind of a favor? You see, I'm a budding street musician. I can tell. Working on my next big hit. Feel me? Okay. But I'm sort of stuck on a few lines. I just gotta get these last few rhymes right. Maybe you could share a little of your creativity with me and see what we come up with. Time and place, bud. Come on, it'll be fun. Are you sure about this? You know how important this has become. Time is of the essence. You don't have time to not help me. That's exactly what I was afraid poor Mula was going to say. Uh-huh. What do you think would take longer? Helping an up-and-coming Cena songwriter finish a guaranteed worldwide hit? Or you could ignore me and maybe I'll send over an anonymous tip to the Neo SFPD. You see, I know for a fact that everything inside this shop here is 100% legal. But I bet whatever you got in your mind sure ain't. Even if they didn't find anything, it'd take the rest of the day to iron out. People like you don't come down here for anything boring. We clean up good. How well do you cover your tracks when you're in such a hurry, I wonder? Damn. This isn't good. If Lexi in particular gets suspicious and starts tracking us down, things will become rougher for us. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be working with Lexi directly on a lot more of this stuff. Not to mention all the other people it could indirectly affect. Also true. This whole case is life or death. Huh. Kind of a dramatic rom, ain't it? I mean, they're not wrong. But I made my point clear. If you don't help me out, I'll make sure you never get in to see Nanya at all. He's my buddy. Done me a favor or two, so I return him when I'm asked. That's how we do things around here. Yeah. I knew you'd see it my way. All you gotta do is help me complete my rhymes, you dig? Uh-huh. A couple of them are just missing a word or two, but if I really want to make this song fantastic, I'm gonna need some killer inspiration. It's gonna be super cred. Anyway, you ready for this? Sure. Gonna give it a shot? That's what I like to hear. Here's the first line I'm having trouble with. Having trouble with. You ready? It's my favorite season, only comes once a year. I'll show you the true meaning of, uh, hang on a second. What? It's my favorite season, only comes once a year. I'll show you the true meaning of my holiday cheer. Hey, yeah, that totally works. Whoa. <laughs> Great idea, thanks a ton. Yeah, I hope that helps. Here's the next line. Okay. Ready? Pay mm -hmm. attention now. If you bring mistletoe, you knock me off my guard. And if you want my number, I'll, I'll, um. Hmm. You know, for this one, I don't think words are gonna be enough. I'm gonna need some inspiration to make it come together. If you've got anything to show me that you think will help me out, let me know.
Wow. A business card? Knock you off your guard, business card. If you bring mistletoe, you knock me off my guard. But if you want my number, I'll give you my business card. Hey, that totally works. All right. Broken Caden. Really? Thanks so much. I'd never be able to write a song like this without you. Yeah, I guess. A Christmas-themed love song? <clears throat> Aren't those supposed to be pretty tacky? All right, now I need your help with just one more line. I promise it's the last one. This one's been driving me up a wall. I hope you can tackle it as well as you did the others. Ready? Here we go. This is harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. We can ride this beat with a nice pair of um, damn it! The first thing you get in the game. This is getting embarrassing. Yeah, especially considering that it's like so, you know, important to most of your genre. There's no way to salvage this one without some seriously fresh inspiration, yo. Yeah, how about the latest? Don't set lose of hope. I'm sure it'll hit us any second now. Yeah, as, as a journalist, the first thing that I had to do in this game was write a review about these headphones. Those damn headphones. <laughs> GX Ultra Beats, top of the line in budget headwear. You can, like, listen to all sorts of music throughout the game. And it's neat because it's been slowly unlocking more music for us as we've been going through the game. This is harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. We can ride this beat with a pair of GX Ultra Beats. Headphones. Headphones. WTF, mate. That doesn't rhyme. Oh, man. You totally threw off my style with that one. Headphone. You might need to find some more inspiration around before you can really help me. Are you kidding? I'm gonna keep thinking, but let me know if you come up with anything new. Haven't you ever rapped before? Wait, those are... Uh, sure, why not? We're already carrying spoiled milk. The train's like fully aware of what's in my pocket, has been helping me carry the stuff around the whole time. <laughs>
tough boy has scribbled shoddily on the building in the spray paint. It's not very illustrative. Isn't there a phrase people say when they see this? Oh my wa mo shinderu. He did the thing. That's the one. Junk. This is this is genius. The contrast of the art's colors to the walls. The way the letters stretch out, not to mention the accented punctuation amplifying the outcry. Who are the junks, and to whom are they unworthy? The thick gray covers the window, making it look like the outside of a prison cell. An industrial-sized air conditioner rattles near the window. A few strips of paper flap around its vents. Poor Moolah is playing a loud set in the alleyway. Their righteous row bobs to the beat. Alright, now I need your help with just one more line. I... This one's been driving... Ready? This is harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. We can ride this beat with a nice pair of... This is getting embarrassing. There's no way to salvage this. Don't lose hope. What item? What item anywhere in this game rhymes with bones, bones, pair of... How could you be so dense? This is harmony. That doesn't you rhyme. You gotta be kidding oh, me. Oh, man. I'm gonna keep thinking. Do you even know? This is harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. We can ride this beat with a pair of gummy Christmas scones. Yeah, bud? Uh, he does know those are donuts, right? Now that's what I call a tasty beat. Uh... That was amazing! I can't believe you pulled it off! Okay. Whatever you do for work now, it doesn't matter! You should become a musician! <laughs> we totally become rivals, and I bet you that... On second thought, you keep your day job. This is my territory. You feel me? I was gonna say, you just asked me to write all your rhymes for you. But you did help out in a huge way. So, I guess you're cool. Mm -hmm. Go on in and see Nanya whenever you want. I'll just be chilling out here, soaking up the inspiration of my surroundings, baby. Here, you can keep the do- uh, Scones. It was nice meeting you, Four Moolah. Hey, you too, little Bob Blue. Hey. That kind of rhymes. Yeah, it sure did. Let's go. <laughs> Says surgery in progress. A colossal mess of tangled wires sprawls on the floor. With the proper head tilt and ice squint, it kind of looks like the Mooney map. Without those indecipherable new Bart stains, of course. A very small panel on the wall belches out loose stray wires. Maybe they're for powering the surgery equipment? God, the dental drill noise. Yep, that is very similar to your room, isn't it? The screws in the corners of the casing look frayed. Whoever maintains it clearly... Clearly doesn't really know how to use a screwdriver. Add screen. Lung augments, spine augments, cybernetic arms, all made by the Dynamo brand. Not exactly prime advertising real estate. For per implants, you can't get much better. 
Pretty sure the screen doesn't even have the ability to scan anything. It's just an advertisement. Maybe I want implants. Quit trying to stop me from getting them. A neon crash sign lights at the front of the beat up desk. This wide desk has seen better days, truly. A large circular screen scrolls through upgrade options and parts available in the store. It's not very effective at explaining what the augments actually do. Okay. An actual CRT monitor. What is this? This is known as a CRT monitor. Almost nobody still uses them anymore. They're very outdated. Yep, but you would see them in the cyberpunk story. Like, early ones. Nanya has rigged himself a specialized point-of-sale system on this monitor. There are a few empty cells on the screen above a tax calculator and total line. This guy is one of the most serious looking people you've ever seen. Enjoy your coffee. Nope. Nope. Nope, I don't know you. Right. You got someone willing to vouch for you? If not, get out of my shop. Charlie Nova said I should come talk to you. Charlie? Yeah, I remember him. That TV guy runs his mouth a lot. Yeah. Paid good enough. Alright then, what can I do for you? Charlie said your name's Nanya? Sure, if that's what you want to call me. If your credit's clear, you can call me whatever you want. Enough foreplay. What can I do for you? Sorry. A fresh install, custom firmware, maybe an upgrade? Yes. I can pretty much do it all. But most people come in here for VR implants. Turns out brain surgery is expensive, yeah? Yeah. Uh, we're here in a different kind of business. We're in a bad situation. Local news articles are being mysteriously altered after they've been posted to the mesh, even while the originals are still online. Charlie Novas are being manipulated as well, and he pointed us in your direction. It didn't start happening until after he had his implant upgraded. Have you had issues with the human revolution? What are you, cops? No. Quite the opposite. No, worse. You're journalists. <laughs> Get the hell out of my shop! Oh. I have a business to run. I don't have time to answer shit about shit that don't got shit to do with me. You found shit. the door before? Find it again. And tell Charlie he can get someone else to do him a rush job when he's back on stims and needs a workaround. He ain't welcome around here anymore. Uh, give us a moment, please. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of being given the runaround by these meat bags. Turing? We could just find some bribe or blackmail to get what we want from this Nanya. But I think it's time to take matters into our own hands. I have an idea. Keep him occupied for a few minutes. How do you want me to do that? Just do what you normally do and ask questions. Nothing about the blog post, though. We don't want to set him off. Just keep him talking. It'll only take a minute. Are you going to get going, or am I going to have to call someone to make you get going? I think we got off on the wrong foot, bud. Damn straight. Now get out of here! 
Listen, we don't think you had anything to do with manipulating Charlie's stories. I didn't! We were just hoping to get some more background information on the kind of implant he has so we can follow other leads. Shit. Fine, whatever. I'll tell you what you want, within reason. Thank you. Doctor-patient confidentiality and all that? Yeah. Just promise me it'll get you the hell out of my shop a little sooner. Yes, sir. Deal. Sorry for this. Our circumstances have gotten serious. We're following anything we can all the way to the end. There's no way to hack a VR implant like Charlie's. I mean, you can definitely install hostile firmware on one, but you can't just load whatever program you want without the user's knowledge. Any changes to the loaded firmware will trigger some really obvious visual indicators to let you know something's being changed, and those are put in on the hardware level. Interesting. I've never heard of anyone being able to circumvent them. The only person who could have loaded hostile firmware on there is me. And don't try and go there. I get paid too much to risk my reputation over changing a few blog posts. What about using the mesh to mess with the implant? Is there some way to change the input remotely? No, the implant itself doesn't have any kind of wireless connection. You have to use a headset with an induction coil for I.O. Wireless just doesn't have the bandwidth for it. Huh. You might be able to try <clears throat> infecting a ROM with some virus that screws with the I.O. But you only use a connection to a ROM for AR HUDs. They can't handle full simulation. You'd need a full rig and a hardline connection to the net to do that. So... I'd give it a big maybe. If that's actually how it all happened, they probably would have found whatever infected his ROM way before you showed up here to bother me. Could it have just been faulty parts? Not to be too blunt about it, but this field of expertise is a little disreputable. Maybe your supplier sent you an implant with something fishy preloaded. Damn it. Look, I get it. I'm working out of an old auto garage on the bad side of town. But I'm a fully licensed cyber surgery tech. This entire business is legitimate. Yeah. It isn't illegal to install custom parts or firmware in any current generation implants. It just breaks the warranty. My business keeps a low profile so we don't run into bogus patent infringement lawsuits from Flower Cybernetics or whatever shell company they decide to come after you with. All of my parts are sourced direct from the original manufacturer, completely above board. So if they're bad, they were built bad by the factory. Now, is that all? I have appointments to keep. Thank you for your time. Yeah, whatever. You may not know this, but I have a finely tuned sense of electromagnetic fields. All ROMs do. We need to be able to maintain optimal contact with the mesh, catalog and use various wireless transmissions, and avoid areas with dangerously high interference. Your stock off-the-shelf ROM has very little command over the frequencies available to be scanned. But I'm starting to realize how very little of me is stock or off-the-shelf after the changes Hayden made. That means when the humidity is low, the air fairly sings for me, amongst other things. Yeah, I'm not quite getting your point. Meaning, in layman's terms, I could read his monitor over his shoulder while being across the room. What? How? Well, some. I doubt I could have handled an LCD monitor. They require extra parts I just don't have. But a CRT is an excited cathode ray. You can detect the electromagnetic disturbance and be able to tell the frequency of what's being rebroadcast on the screen drawn line by line. That's so cool. And the fidelity is a bit low. The, uh, 
a CRT monitor had low fidelity to begin with. They're like 320 by 280. Anyways, Nanya looked up his client records on Charlie, and I got some of the names of his other customers off of the spreadsheet. One in particular stands out, Shotaro Otsuka. What's the relevance? Mr. Otsuka is a moderately prominent tech blogger, respected, perhaps a bit vitriolic. He catches my attention, though, because historically he has been very critical of Parallax in his posts. <laughs> Recently, though, the tone has been increasingly moderate, and now he is almost effusive in his praise. His fans are accusing him of shilling for the company, but many of his earliest posts show some of the same manipulations that we saw from Augmented Eye and Nova's blog. Now it's like he's being ghostwritten entirely. Huh. Lead the way, then. I've marked the location of Shotaro Otsuka's apartment on your map. Thank you. After you. Thank you, Turing. So many places. Oh, um, all right. Let's let's save here. This has been quite an adventure for the evening. And I am beginning to feel slightly weathered. And I'm trying to make certain that I'm conscious of when that's happening instead of uh, continuing to play games until I'm so tired I can no longer operate OBS. The progression of this has been an absolute blast. I'm really digging the story. I'm also amazed by just like uh, how much story there is here. <laughs> yeah, going way too long until I'm completely non-functional. Yeah, that is classic me. <laughs> uh, I woke up way too early. I didn't end up napping. And yeah, just going into this, it's, it's a heavy subject. And it, there's a lot of extra thinking that goes into these episodes. Because I just... A lot of introspection. A lot of introspection. It's a good story though, really enjoying it. <sighs> Let's see who we're gonna go ahead and raid into tonight. Uh, who's currently on? DJ Santos. Oh, of course I'm not typing. Okay. Let's do a green glow dog raid. And... Yeah, this has been a lovely night. Thank you so much, everybody, for dropping in this evening and all those who were able to take part in chat, as well as all those that just kind of hung out and watched. And thank you for everybody that tunes into watching the VODs. I super appreciate all of you and all of your assistance in getting this far here today. <clears throat> um, I huh, have so many other products that I'm going to be bringing in soon, but we have so many steps along the way that we have to hit before we get to that point. So expect to see more of this stuff. Tomorrow evening, probably about 9, mount 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I will see you all soon. Have a lovely evening. And say hi to DJ Santos. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Green Glow Dog Rain. Thank you so much, EL Connors, for dropping in.